everyone. Welcome to the Receipt Podcast. This week brought to you by Blue Apron, Casper, and MeUndies. There they are. All right up there. All of them. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. <laughs> I'm Blaine. I'm Bernie. I'm Gus. We everyone came in hot today. Blaine is like, hot. Like, why are you hot, Blaine? I I'd had meetings like every hour leading up to this meeting. Why I had would a that make with you, you hot? Well, because I was late. I was so busy. Like I was literally like walking out the door and I was like, yeah, make a phone call to this person. All right, gotta go by. I, I, I was in two meetings today where literally I was standing up with my backpack on for the last five minutes. I'm like trying to get out the door. The meeting I had right before the podcast. Yeah, I was that meeting too. Did you know? No, I was oh, called in. Yeah, why'd you call in? Because I was at a meeting before that that I couldn't make it to. <laughs> I like that we call into our own meetings because we're at meetings. Yeah. And there was another that one happened. at a location scout I know, I that I was late to I another know. meeting. I had, I had one department here send me something via the postal service. They mailed me something. And I was like, why did you mail this to me? I literally work a hundred feet away from <laughs> you. Make it uh, you. You didn't have to bring it to me. You could have just messaged me, and I would have walked over and grabbed it. Well, you confirm yeah, or deny you nothing what to do. That was. <laughs> it's like, I, I can. I can wait. Like it's. It's still. It, if I could. Wait, if I wait two days and get it, it's still faster than getting it through the mail. Did it come from another place, or was it literally they took it from where they work? And mailed it from there. I don't know. It wasn't like, like sent from a warehouse. I don't know if they sent it. No, right. They had it. They made it in their office, <laughs> and then they took it to the post office, I guess, or had the mailman pick it up, and then it was delivered it's to like, me at it's home. Just a big confusing business now. I love it. <laughs> What's got, going on? Got to trim the fat. <laughs> got fat cats over here. Speaking of mailing stuff, though, I'm I'm dealing with. A shipping problem that's gonna I know is about to land on me because the podcast starts at five o'clock and I have my new iPhone is arriving. Oh, my you house. got a sign it's for on that. the truck right now. Did you pre-sign? Uh-uh. Can Uh-oh. Ash not get it? She probably can if she's there, but I don't think she's there. I think she's here. I just saw her like a minute yeah. ago. She's not over there. Can one of the kids? So I'm like checking. I'm like checking all the time mm. to see if it's. Safe. And I wonder is do you think my iPhone, my current iPhone, gets upset every time I check? To see, like, <laughs> no, if a new machine. one is coming. It knows its death is incoming. It's a robot. No, how dare you, first of all. But you said you were switching, so why'd you get the new iPhone? Switching to what? Nobody switched with me, that's why. No, I know. We just Peer didn't pressure. go through with it. Yeah. Does I, anybody have that stupid bug where you type the letter I, then it says, like, A and question mark in a block? No. No. Have you all not seen that? Like it, I don't have the new phone, so. No, it's, like, in iOS 11. Oh, iOS 11 is great. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> that's fine for me. How do you like the the OS... Uh, in the new Xbox that you got. Oh, it talks about it. I like it. It's way better. Oh, it's way better. Yeah. Well, okay, good. Oh, so I want to clear up a misconception because we talked about this and people have been trying to correct me. Oh. The way I use my Xbox is when I boot it up, it immediately goes to TV mode because I run my TV through it. Why did you do that? Um, just because I thought at the time when I got my Xbox initially that it would have a lot more robust, like, cable features. You're a fucking corporate shit. I don't use any of that stuff. It's all garbage, <laughs> especially now that the Kinect's gone. Uh, so well, when you can still use the connect, you can still, but it's With I don't I unplugged it. Special. Let him tell the story. So Thank when you. I hit the jewel and I bring up my guide, it's not the full guide. It's just that little like sliver on the side, the little schmear on the side. Right. So I only see a couple of pins there. It's not as many pins as right. I used to see. When I would just hit the, so that's what I was complaining about. And I, I followed up with you. I sent you a text message yeah. with what I was talking I about, was but I never followed up. I was confused at the time, but I'm no longer. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of people correcting me on online. It's like I understand that there are just as many pins if you go to the pin section. What I'm saying is it's not as easily accessible. They, uh, the, <laughs> I didn't like the new OS for the dumbest reason. Is the first thing it showed me was something I don't like. So now that turned me off to the 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 whole OS in general. Was it a picture of Gus? No, no, <laughs> that would be very personalized. No, listen, I believe that people should be allowed to enjoy whatever they enjoy. If people like something, they have a good time with that thing. Other people should not make fun of them for enjoying this thing. The one exception I have to this is the game Cuphead. People who play Cuphead are fucking lunatics. Why? I don't know why you would subject yourself to playing a game like that. I've watched Teddy play it. I've watched Ashley play it. It's a it's a living digital nightmare. What what's wrong with it? It's have you played it? Yeah, I love it. Oh, you're fuck you're a terrible person. It's awful. Why? why? It's because it's it's I don't know why you would subject yourself to a game that's it, basically impossible to why, play. Why is it any more difficult or impossible than PUBG? What do you well, PUBG is a great game. It's impossible to win. Played by normal people impossible all over to the win. world. It's what's not, the, what's no. the success rate? It takes a lot longer to win a, a yeah, PUBG game than what cup, what happens cuphead. more often a chicken dinner or you beat a cuphead level? I've never played a cuphead level. <laughs> I, I played two seconds of cuphead, immediately put it down so and got the fuck away from it. Just watching other people play it. Uh, it's horrible. It's really it's like here's the here's the experience of watching Cuphead. You're like, oh, it turns out, oh, it's cool. Well, I, I like this aesthetic. Wow, that enemy's firing a lot of bullets. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's not stopping, and you've been shooting this enemy for about the last 30 minutes. <laughs> it's everything I can't fucking stand about a game. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you like Super Meat Boy? Yeah, I like Super Meat Boy. Oh, you're, see, this is it. We're never, this is, we're done. This professionally, I've never finished Super Meat Boy, though. Go figure. Yeah. Because it's fucking impossible. It's hard. Yeah, it's impossible. You don't like being challenged. You like things easily handed to you. I do. <laughs> Listen, I do. I just finished Breath of the Wild, like literally this weekend. <laughs> I just finished that. Teddy, like helped me, Teddy helped me beat Ganon. I don't like that when you beat him, you have it just goes back to before you beat him off. Yeah, it puts a little star by your save file. Spoiler alert. Yeah. And I think it's because they don't want you to have the thing, one of the weapons that you get right at the end. Well, they could just make that disappear. I guess it was so. like. Yeah, temp weapon. or just give it to you. But then the if game's Ga over. Yeah, thematically, if Ganon's gone, then like, would all the evil be gone too? Uh, it just makes me feel lazy. Like I'm just on my ass with a big thing and go off to the castle. And like, you're wanna... just wandering around doing shit. Yeah, I want to fix it. I want to like hang out in the castle. You're cooking. Stuff. Yeah, riding a horse. What I'm are you doing? That. What do you? What's left for you to do? Uh, I haven't. I haven't really touched any of the DLCs. What's the one you said that shows all your footsteps? Hero's path, and that's just all it does. Yeah. Well, really? no, that's just one feature of one gotcha. of many features in DLC, but it's awesome. It tracks it all the way back to when you first started playing, even before that DLC. Wait, so it knows the entire time. I think the last um, hundred hours you've played. I think the last two hundred. Oh, I only 200? played like oh. seventy, so it was all in. But basically, the moment you start the game, it tra it puts a line on the map is where you is went. It like so a heat like, map. It's just it's like a, a line. line. But yeah, it's like for, so for me. Wow, it starts. What a great feature. <laughs> I think it's, right? it's a really great feature. But for me, it's, it starts with like a little, a little point, and it's like dead, dead, and it's just me dying. I you can track every what? I died so much to be. Yeah, I died a lot. And was, then it was very frustrating. And then you can see the moment where you get the paraglider because then you you start moving a lot quicker, and then warping to places. Is that also yeah, I like a line. It. Yeah, it's a heat it's map. line. I just like stats like that, Blaine. I like if I put seventy hours into something, I'm I like that it I, tracked it. I uh, over the weekend, I tweeted an image of. Uh, I had enabled stats on my mouse, and I tracked all the mouse clicks for the past 20 hours of me playing PUBG. And I posted an image, and you can see, like, it's very little clicking in the middle. It's a lot of inventory management and rage quitting, but very little <laughs> actual firing. Do you rage quit a lot? Yeah. Wait, you is really? that like the top right? Is yeah. Exit? <laughs> it's like yeah. exit. Fuck! Hey, so how can you not understand how people would be interested in stats related to something? Because every time you put even a scrap of food in your mouth, you've got your phone out, and you're tracking it. And your little macros app that you have, or Not whatever anymore. you're doing. I've been a fat ass lately. I've just been eating like shit. <laughs> you gonna... see me scarf down like a whole bag of fries and a chicken sandwich. I was going to talk to you. Yeah, you're really letting yourself go. I feel like it. We're all worried. We're all really worried. How do you track that, Blaine? Like, if you like, what's your ideal weight? My ideal weight? Yeah, like you, everyone has like a thing they want to weigh like this amount. Like, it's like mine's like lives in the realm of 175 ish. Oh, I thought you were much bigger than that. No. I'm just kidding. 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 i um, speaking of Cuphead, sorry, I know this is a little late into the story, but, uh... If you're just joining us, Cuphead's a shitty game. It is. It is not. It's really fucking terrible Alana game. Alana and I were playing it at her apartment. We were so... What a just nightmare fixed date. ...fixed in on, on the game. She went... co and, and I, uh, no, like, we would, we would... I'd play, I'd die, give it to her, she'd play, she'd die, give it to me. Why don't you just both play? Uh, because... Is it co-op? Yeah. yeah. Cuphead oh, and Mugman. I think yeah. her she was having something uh, with her, her controller. So we're just doing it that way. She goes, she goes and makes some tea. Like, that's the lie you tell your little brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, controller's yeah, broken. Thing. Second controller's yeah, on the wrong channel. So she goes and she makes some tea, and we're laying and we're sitting on her bed, and I'm sitting at the end of it, and then I suddenly hear screaming, just bloody murder screaming, and I look back, and yeah. in the process of watching the screen, watching me play Cuphead, she dropped her hot, boiling hot tea. Right on her leg, right on her ass, and it just like scorched her leg. Jesus. Still a better experience than playing Cuphead. <laughs> <laughs> Still better. Yeah, it was it, a pretty bad. Did you have to go to the doctor right? or anything, or was it just like? No, we okay. like immediately. I like we went. She was in the bathtub, and we turned on cold water, and then I just sat there with a solo cup, just pouring cold water on her wounds. Oh, that's quite. And just kind of comforting her. She was like a whimpering puppy. Was the saddest. Thing I thought you were seen. gonna say you sat there playing Cuphead in the mirror, so you could <laughs> see it all the way there. <laughs> It was it was a, it was very unfortunate. But are, yeah. you are you supposed to put cold water on a burn? I always thought you weren't supposed to put cold water on. I a thought burn. you were for like ten minutes. No. Yeah, we googled it real quick, and I don't think ice is the way to go, but I think cold water is the way to soothe okay. it. Okay. So we were just like, yeah, loading that thing up with cold water. 
It was a very unfortunate night. <clears throat> yeah. That sucks. It does. I feel like all my stories kind of just like shit off at the end. Why didn't and you say it silent? <laughs> Why didn't you say something like that happened after that that was good? Because uh, I'm bad at improv. Well, I mean, yeah. you have to make and, it up. Uh, I have other stories that are not related, but that's why I'm known for my non sequiturs. Because I'm like, <laughs> is that what you're known for? <laughs> I'll pull over. <laughs> when the next I think thing. of Blaine, I think of non sequiturs. That's how I describe him as Blaine, the non sequitur. Well, I'm just guy. random. <laughs> I'm kind of a little finicky sometimes. Um, I'm trying to find my glasses. I can't find. So I, I did the thing that you did, Bernie. Yeah, what'd you do? Uh, where I didn't switch and I just got the new phone. Uh, you didn't. Oh yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. But, did you transfer so, your old stuff? Or you I did. A new phone. I do that every time because Apple. Eh. So here's what happens, no. and here's why I don't like Apple, and they're terrible. Aside from, like, <laughs> you just spend a thousand dollars on your phone. It's, it's vomit inducing. I hate myself. I hate myself. Go get a fucking Galaxy. Uh, be uh, yeah, I know. All right, go ahead. So anyway, <laughs> I, iOS 11 destroyed my iPhone. Whatever the hell the last one was, seven. Yeah, yeah. seven. <laughs> it just it demolished it. It would take like four times as long to boot up. I couldn't even swipe between stuff. It would stutter. Everything sucked about it. And Apple's only response to that is just start a new phone. It's like that's not an acceptable option. It's really not because you lose a bunch of stuff. You lose all the your messaging history. I still and all do it, stuff. but it's not acceptable. Yeah. So I was like, no. So I just sat there for a month with this crap phone, and I thought it's my final chance for Apple. If I get the new phone and I can transfer my current stuff to the new one, and it works, then that'll be good. And I did it, and it works, and it's the best phone I've ever had, <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. So much. I did contact you and ask you what you thought of the phone before yeah. I got mine. I was even I was sh showing Mega thing because she got the eight, so I got I got the ten. And you, uh, wow, she's impatient. All, <laughs> she's impulsive. She so all the alerts come in now, but they don't show any previews until you look at it and unlock it with your face. So it, it will say like message from blah 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 mail, but it won't say any of the details. Then you look at it and it's like bing, and all the information comes up. Nice. So I was showing Meg this feature. I was like, oh, let's see, there's a thing. BBC News. Look at this. Looked at it. 26 people dead in Texas shooting. I was like, oh, that's a, that's a bummer. That's, that's a, a bummer, bummer for showing a feature of my new phone. Check yeah. this out. <laughs> yeah, I was Aww. literally like ready to be like, look at that. Oh. Our news, news alerts are bad. Yeah. And anytime Ever, my now. phone buzzes and it's like the New York Times or the Washington Post, I'm like, oh, do I really want to look at this? Brace yourself. Do I really need to know? Yeah. And I was in a coffee I, shop I was not, I I was not ready for that information. Yeah, I just gotten out of Thor. I was like on my fucking Thor high because that movie rocked. And then I, uh, Lilana nudges me. We're in the coffee shop. And then I look at it and I just like, I f could feel myself sink. It's like, it's not even two months since the last one. Isn't it? Dude, and the thing is, is like Columbine happened, and when that happened, it was just like that was fucking earth shattering news when Columbine happened. I remember like so many s changes were implemented in schools. Maybe it's the first one you remember. I mean, this goes all the way back to the 60s. Like Austin was one of the sites for the oh, first yeah. ever mass shootings. Or from yeah. the tower. But I don't know. I just remember the reaction to that was just so like visceral. The whole country was shaken. And not that this isn't the case, but it's like two shootings happened on a bigger scale. Within two months, it, yeah, it's just insane. There's well, it, well, there's been stuff since then. Like we had the shooting a few a few weeks ago in Vegas. I've been out of town for a while. Is that about, about a month ago now? That uh, it was. I think so. Then we had this one in this the church, which was two or three days ago. But we've had one in Austin since then. And I don't think most people are going to be aware of this because it's not global news. Just over a month. Just over a month. It's not global news, or it's not even you know national news. But mm. there was this thing where a guy in Austin. Just randomly shot four people. Just started randomly shooting at cars. Yeah. He was like driving and shooting at the same time. Four people's a mass shooting. It's multiple people getting shot. You know, and that was up on 183 or something. No, yeah. it was all up and down 35. I think they said somewhere like way. He started shooting like way down south and then drove north <coughs> along the interstate. Where's Nat? Nat, you want to jump on Mike because she's from Vegas. So I've I've been curious like what I haven't I haven't talked to anybody who. Not many people I know live in Vegas. It's rare to know somebody who lives in Vegas. The, I think the, from Vegas. The frustrating thing yeah. is, Gee. you know, after the the Vegas thing, it seemed like we were going to see some action. Like there was serious effort to like, like put some restrictions in place to you know let's cut some of the bullshit with our our gun laws, and then that just all went away. I, that always happens. Though. We haven't seen anything it's at all come from it. Also, the kid, the shooting in the the school, same thing. And the shooting at the nightclub. Well, Massachusetts outlawed bump stocks. And something else was it trigger cranks? Maybe so. It's but whatever it was, it was the buzzwords that happened like right after the Las Vegas shooting. I think the sales of bump stocks went up. Or did after, they really after that shooting? I uh, don't even. I mean, that's it's a weird stat, but you know, people are finding out about something for the first time, and 
they get it as a result. I mean, honestly, Gavin, there was probably a lot of those were being purchased by news organizations and YouTube creators who wanted to make a video to show what a bump stock is at mm. that point in time. That does kind of mess you know? with I'm not saying that was all of them, but, you know, there's reasons why things get bought that aren't necessarily like, oh, I want to go out and shoot a bunch of people. Did too. you buy a bump stock? <laughs> no, I didn't buy a bump stock after that. So, hey, this is everybody. This is Nat joining us. So, Nat Hi. is you were she was in the vlog from uh, we did for, in Vegas with the helicopter vlog. She was in it briefly, but we didn't really like say hello to you during the vlog. So, or we did. I actually did. I did an intro thing. Did you cut it? I did cut it because <laughs> how's that make you feel, Nat? I know. Here's why. <laughs> I did this intro thing where I was talking to her, but I was off camera and I was just pointing the camera, saying, "Hey, you know, tell us about yourself. How'd you hear about Rush Teeth and all this stuff?" Because I've known her for where do we meet? Comic Con. Comic Con, uh, the laser team panel. Is that what it was? Comic Con a few years ago, yeah. Yeah, so Nat has, I gotta figure out I can say this the right way. Nat had a really interesting job where you, we know a lot of cosplayers who make a living from doing cosplaying. She does it in a really specific way. She's the, I'm gonna say, try to say this the best I can. She's the <laughs> official, was the official Black Widow for a Marvel licensed property. So she was like the official person who was playing Black Widow. All the pretty, time. Did I say that right? Profile. Yeah. Okay. Really. Good. <laughs> okay. So uh, and so um, for the but for the vlog when we did this introduction, I was talking to her. It's just me pointing a camera at this girl <laughs> in this disembodied like male voice asking her questions. I just got a super like creepy, creepy. vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna cut, gonna say, cut this out of the vlog. <laughs> cut this like, out completely. A little bit cost and couch. It was, yeah, it was. I didn't. I was just watching it back. I was like, "This is creepy, right?" Now he goes, "Yeah, this is a little creepy." So I was like, "All right, get rid of this." Good call. Yeah, <laughs> but at least you realized it. But well, you just, live, you live in Vegas, in Vegas, and you were like, I, you weren't at the event, obviously, but you were around when everything went down. Yeah, I was texting with my friend who was at the event, and we were talking about the song that was being played, the musician that was playing. The song. I was looking up the lyrics to the song she was telling me about, and then like four minutes pass, and I get this text like, "There's gunfire, and we're running." Oh, and I'm like, you know, there's nothing on Twitter yet. I opened up a police scanner right away. There's nothing on a police scanner yet. So it's just like this like horrifying twelve minutes where she didn't text me back. Where I'm like, is this gunfire? Is this like scary fire? And then everything started rolling in. I was. It's scary because oh. I actually learned about some events where I learned about the Texas church shooting because suddenly on Facebook a bunch of my friends that live in Austin were reporting themselves as safe. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh oh, what the fuck happened? Mm -hmm. And so I immediately went to the news and tried to figure out what happened. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's I got a, a New York Times push alert. Did you? Yeah. You gotta stop. Why you just get off that? Because uh, <laughs> you gotta know the news. But it upsets you though. You gotta know the news. Let me ask you a question. Show of hands. Who here follows Donald Trump on Twitter? You actively follow him. I don't. I do not. I I, I, I want to. I have an unpopular opinion. I think I do not like that his account was deleted by some rogue employee. Oh, I agree with you. And it seemed like everyone was celebrating <laughs> it, saying, "Oh, it's the hero we deserve. Or this is the hero we need." I don't like that. What was turned? What they say now is like some contractor on his last day has the ability. <laughs> right? They're not gonna <laughs> has the ability to uh, to silence uh, uh, an account that he disagrees with. Or he or she disagrees with. Who knows? Um, you know, I don't like the guy. I don't like the things he says. But if he's not violating the terms of the website, people always try to show how he is, though, by threatening nuclear war and how that's a violent act <laughs> to do that. So, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that kind of thing. They do try to show how it's uh, it could potentially be the violation of the terms of service. What and the hell is that noise? I don't know. What is that? Anybody know? Someone's it's a giant vibrator. It's a what? <laughs> They need car. to get that car checked. Do you is that help? car from like 1915? Is it a fucking Model T? <laughs> I can push it. Uh, yeah, I, th I, I thought people the were really was yesterday. Wow, that's crazy. Somebody just wrote that to me. People yeah, were yesterday. We're happy about that. Uh, someone on Twitter who is this? That people can tweet us at hashtag RT Podcast. And I was talking about Vegas. That there's no laws that would have stopped Vegas killing people is already against the law. Well, let's make it more difficult. Hashtag. You know, why, why can't we imp implement some type of laws to? Make it so that it's not so easy to kill that many people that quickly. Especially Vegas. Vegas. Is like hey, hey, is murder illegal in the UK? I'm it not is, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> Vegas to me, Vegas to me is a place too where it's it kind of defines where we take what is traditionally legal and make different rules for it, but very specific different rules, and that works out okay. Like people in Vegas 
are go they're going wild, but they're not going like off the charts like crazy wild because there's still laws in place to govern what people are doing there. But it is seen as a place where you can go to bend kind of the rules a little bit and go into a little bit of a gray like area. Like whores. Am I describing <laughs> am I describing Vegas properly here? What's it like living in Las Vegas? Boring. Is it? It's boring. It's uh especially like when you were out there, you're like, what's fun to do? And I'm like, I don't do any of the stuff that tourists would consider fun because it's boring and mundane. To yeah, me. what do Las Vegas people do for fun? You go to the casinos like every night? Oh god, no. Um <laughs> I'm gonna out her a little bit. She took us to Treasure Island. It's kind of a <laughs> you, kind of gross. You said you wanted to go somewhere divey and gross for laughs. <laughs> oh, that is true. Is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shits and gigs. We did something on the vlog um, that we cut. I don't know if I've talked about it before. Maybe I have. How much did you cut from the vlog? cut a lot from the vlog. We're, we're learning. Well, this, this, this was an unrelatable thing. That's something I'm very careful about because we film a lot. It's like a 100 to 1 shooting ratio, and you just pick the best moments. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But we did this thing. Uh, Ellie and I, we were, we were out late. It was for the GameStop event. Uh, Ashley and John had to go to bed early because their hosting thing was the next day, but mine was all done. So we ended up staying out a lot later, and then we hatched this plan. Never come up with a plan when you're drunk. <laughs> Came up with this plan of, hey, there's this place in Vegas where if you have a hangover, you can get an IV. Oh, right. And yeah. you can get over your hangover. We talked about Thought it on about the podcast it. before. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's a great idea, right? So, but the idea when you're drunk is, hey, let's make sure we're hungover tomorrow. Oh. So then you end up just drinking it a lot. We're out to like four in the morning because there's no fucking call, last call. And then we end up at this... Uh, we end up with this at this IV place. I gotta say, we didn't put it in the vlog because it didn't seem relatable in any way. Even when we're doing it, we're like, this is kind of like a little gross. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of gross. But I have to say, it worked like a fucking well, charm. Why don't you show it? That's interesting. It, it worked like cool. a we're 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 working on a like a end of the year vlog for stuff we didn't include. And I think that might make I the cut. That makes that, sense. I think that's relatable. They advertise that to like everyone up and down the strip, and like the big truck. You've talked about that on the podcast, so it makes total sense to put in the vlog. Yeah, so it's it would it would be cool, but I don't know. I get Gavin. I mean, you know, it's a lot of times with video That's content the on the internet. If you make something that the people find unrelatable, they just kind of hammer on you for it. And the big one for me was, um, it's usually something to do with money. Uh, and the big one for me with the vlog when I went to San Francisco, it was Ashley's birthday, so we took a helicopter ride, a tour of San Francisco. It was like ride. it was expensive. It was like seven hundred and fifty dollars, but people were just like. Really furious that we did that. They were very upset. And the price of getting us to San Francisco and staying in a hotel in San Francisco for three days was like four times that amount just to travel and go to San Francisco. Awesome. But nobody freaks out when you go to a city. But it's still, that's the more expensive. Yeah. I, I, I went to San Francisco with Tony last year and the whole trip was like. It was like eighteen hundred bucks all in all. Oh, boo! Yeah. Fucking who? I go there every month. <laughs> I do that too. to maintain my relationship. It's an expensive place. It is. Just find uh, yourself a local girl. I'm I mean, gonna watch you your boiling water on her. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that. That was <laughs> alleged. I I watched your blog to live vicariously through you and your like weird escapades. I don't want to see you getting up and making breakfast. I want to see you like I do shooting a fucking machine gun out of a helicopter. You say that, but I made a I made a. Uh... Oh, Nat did it too. By the way, it was how cool was that? Right. I think that's the coolest thing I've done in my entire life, and I will never do anything cooler. <laughs> and she, she saw Ellie take the header out of the helicopter. I didn't see it. But uh, you saw it, right? When yeah, like, I was turning away, and then I saw her falling down. It was, like, slow motion, just, like, nothing I could do. It was, uh. it was a crack. <laughs> she went down hard. Mm. But I couldn't hear it because of the blades. So I turned around, and just, everyone's mm. around her. I was like, so oh, if you didn't shit. hear it, did it happen? I don't know. <laughs> Other people saw it, so oh, well. they, they know it happened for sure. Jack handed me some Extra Life stuff. Oh, cool. Life. This weekend, right? Congrats to the community team. They raised oh 58000 91000 91, So why, why I was looking at the Extra Life leaderboard. I thought it was higher. Why is it listed as a lesser amount? Uh, on, Nat, Jack. thanks. Good to see you. Hi. Jack's going to swap out. What, what, what are I looking at here, Jack? Bye, Nat. Hi. Uh, no, so, okay, that, that right there, that's the pin set we have for sale this weekend. It's a four set of pins from, if you remember the Pokemon poster we had a couple years ago? Yes. That is, like, the, the, the gym badges that go with it. Oh. And so that's an exclusive thing only available next weekend from 8 a.m. till 8 a.m. Saturday to Sunday. So it's like a gym badge version of the Let's Play family, Exactly. Right? By and the way, then, just to introduce the audience, this is Jack. He's also a professional cosplayer. Jack Hello, Jack. I am. He plays a uh, homeless lumberjack. Are you Zangief? <laughs> I am. I am. Just, I fight bear. Um, <laughs> no, no, Bernie, so, uh, so we started, if you go to... Uh, extra-life.org slash rooster teeth that is the rooster teeth super team which is all of the different Got groups it. combined together so this weekend we had this previous weekend was about showing uh, showcasing a 25 different teams
teams that are part of the Rooster Teeth Super Team. So they ended up raising about forty-five thousand dollars just from the twenty-four hours that we had we had done, and we were already at about fifty thousand when we started. Wow. So Back to the damn poster, so I can put my arms down. No, it's so funny. Keep it 000. up. So that's Gus. That's Gus holding the brand new uh, poster we have Get this that year. Down. The Rooster Teeth Land. Ah, paper cut. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's very difficult to kind of showcase every aspect of Rooster Teeth, and we figured a theme park style map would be the way to do it. So really there's a uh, live action cool. land. There's slow mo guys balloon. There's uh, the boot from Laser Team. The uh, achievement hunter, the achievement hunter area. The uh, Funhouse Cove, Just Camp Camp it. Land. Don't the give it all away. To really enjoy alley. it, you should Dude, get one a, yourself to support the kids. There's a junkyard Easter egg. That's all I'm gonna say. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. There's a junkyard area full of some retired shows. It's pretty funny. So, <laughs> I don't, yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, that's available for sale uh, this weekend from 8 a.m. Central till 8 a.m. Central uh, Saturday to Sunday. And uh, proceeds from the that we're not making any money off the poster, or the pin set. Also, we have shirts too. I don't have any of those yet. But uh, those are all gonna get, all the proceeds go to the Rooster Teeth donation to Extra Life. Pin. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this year we're trying to hit one million dollars. Which a lot is money. lofty goal. It's a lot. Of money. Lofty goal. And so, uh, but yeah, the community's already raised a whole bunch of money. We're almost at 100000 without even starting ours. So uh, I'm really hoping we hit it. And uh, I know I talked to Gus about possibly having it where uh, we're going to have some raffle stuff where you can come see a podcast recorded live if you win the raffle. Um, I don't know if that's still going on. Why don't Gus, we just... do you want to do you want to talk about the other thing that you want to give away in the raffle? Are we doing that? We can, yeah, we're we're doing it. Or I mean, I haven't uh, talked to anyone, was, but I'm uh, cool uh, doing it. Give it to it. me. It was uh, it was your suggestion, I think, uh, a few months ago that uh, we want to give away the old podcast chairs that you and I used to sit on. Oh, that's a great idea. Those metal the, ones, the black and white ones, with the ones with termites. I don't remember suggesting that, but sure, why not? <laughs> you did suggest it. People want old chairs. Let's yeah. do it. They're, yeah. they're antiques and. Uh, <laughs> What about the fridge? We, with the, we farted in them for many years. Yeah. What about the fridge with the dead um, mouse in it? No, the fridge that's being used. The the <laughs> one caveat I will say about those chairs is they're probably going to be a bitch to ship. So that's going to come with some asterisks that we need to figure out. Yeah, yeah. So can, can people donate internationally? Uh, anyone can donate from wherever they want. Yeah. If you go to uh, if you go to <sighs> roosterteeth.com slash extra life, there's a donate button right underneath kind of the window where our video will be. Click on that, it'll take you to our donation page. And awesome. so we had fans in Australia donating last time. We we had a group from the UK, uh, RT UK. Uh, they they did an hour of time on the uh, the community stream, and it went really really well. We had I mean it was great. We uh, we again we had 25 different teams from all over the planet uh, representing Canada, UK, all over America, and uh, we raised a lot of money. We almost got to 100,000 because uh, we we said at 100,000. If we managed to hit that number, uh, Michael in broadcast would eat one of the one chip challenge chips. Oh God! Uh, oh. So, someone sent us eleven of those. We got wait, someone sent us ten, and someone else sent us one. So we have a lot of those to to play with this year. So Are those are like hot. Chip yeah, packs. yeah. It's one chip in the package, and that's it. So Hard Gavin's pass. gonna eat a bunch of them this weekend. Oh. Good, Gav. God. Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to jump in. I don't want to no, get in the way. But I just want to say like that. We have our poster. We have our pins. They're in. They look amazing, and I can't wait to have extra life this weekend. Well, Jack, I, I, you're gonna hear a lot of it <clears throat> this weekend and the coming week. But I just want to say in advance, I know how much work that you and Katie put into this. Thank you so much in advance. It's it's part of the year that everyone looks forward to. Kiss. Can't wait for oh, this here, year. Here we go. There, there's there's the What's one that? chip challenge chip. So oh. here. Gavin, they here. come in a coffin. What is that? Oh. Look at that throw. It really wow. Explodes in fire. Ah! Um. <laughs> save, it, save it for the kids. So anyway, yeah, yeah hashtag it. for the kids, and uh, yeah, and it went, went incredibly well. I'm so excited for Extra Life this year. We're aiming for one million dollars. Lofty goal. And uh, and then if we get to one point five million, I get to destroy the off top ta- off topic table. So I hope we do that too. So anyway, <laughs> fun time. What's the goal to do that? Uh, one point five million. Okay. Because the, the the problem is we've always set goals and then we hit them and we have nothing else. It's like oh. Shit, we hit our goal. Now what do we do? And so I'm trying to set some like stupid goals. Where it's like if we can get to that, like what would you do? Like Gus, what would you do for two million? Two million dollars. We, we raise set two fire to stage five. There we go. So we'll set st- we'll no. set fire to stage five. <laughs> no. Four million dollars in damage. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so thank you very much. Please check it out. Roosterteeth.com slash Extra Life is the way the place to go this weekend, 8 a.m. Central till Sunday, 8 a.m. Central. It is 24 hours of incredible mayhem, very entertaining, and all for a really great cause. Thanks Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, cool. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Let me read this here. Why do you have an entertainment weekly glass, by the way? What is that? I want to remind everyone, this episode <laughs> of the Roosterteeth Podcast is brought to you by Blue Apron. How annoying is it uh, just having a bit of wine left in large bottles, not knowing whether it's good or bad? So annoying. With Blue Apron, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You can discover six new wines monthly from Napa, Bordeaux, and beyond. Each bottle is slightly smaller than standard and perfectly sized for two to share over a weeknight meal. You can customize each box with the style and varieties you love. They make learning about wine fun by giving you the who, what, and where of every wine they send. Start discovering new wines today. Get $25 off your first wine box by going to blueapron.com slash roosterteethwine. Enjoy perfectly sized wine that comes with custom tasting notes to help you become a wine aficionado. That's blueapron.com slash roosterteethwine. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. 
See, they're like slightly smaller than normal. You like a giant. Yeah, and it, oh, they like list stuff on the back. Variety, vintage, region, oak, appearance, flavors and aroma, profile. You, you can be fancy. I had a sommelier give these to me before the show started. I was really confused. They walked up to me with wine, like here for the ad read. I was like, oh, we're doing the we're doing the wine read. Did you taste it? Here's another I yet. I great I way, a, a good strategy for never having wine left in <clears throat> bottles. Date Ashley Jenkins. You will never have wine left. Did she polish them off? <laughs> it's crazy. Whenever we have like some kind of party at the house, did you just tell us to date Ashley Jenkins. Sure, go for it, Gavin. You, you it, have man. my permission. It's all the rage. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> what? But whenever we have a party and at Ashley and some of the girls from the company get together, it's just they blow through an incredible amount of wine, and it's very specifically champagne. Hmm. So uh, there was a, there was a really funny uh, female moment that happened where we had these two. Th we have conflicts sometime at the company. Like Blaine and I have a huge beef with each other. We can't stand each other. But uh, these two people are having a <laughs> conflict, and I encourage them to go out and like just just work it out or whatever. So it was and it was two ladies, and then who was it? They went. I'm not going to say. <laughs> they went out and they drank they drank wine together, and they had this great moment, and they bonded over everything and worked everything out. And then they also came back and said, and we determined the problem we had was not with each other. The problem is all the men at the company. I was like, that's usually the way those meetings go. Yeah. Usually when <laughs> girls get together over rosé, <laughs> I find out that we're just a bunch of assholes. In their they, defense, they, we are assholes. They have to work with. We are. Yeah. We, I mean, I feel bad for them. What's we're that? jerks. I'm, I'm awful. Yeah, but to women? Like, are we jerks? To everyone. Like a, uh, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity awful kind of guy. <laughs> I think a lot of us, though, have mellowed over the years, except for you. I think I've mellowed. Oh, God. Do you remember the way I used to be? <clears throat> Yeah, I sort Sorry of. That. No, you're pretty. You're pretty consistently horrible. No. Nothing but great experiences with you, Gus. You invite me over to play video games. This is not true. You invite him to your house. No. Oh no, it's for his office. Don't make him jealous. <laughs> do not say. Do not let him think you've been to my house. Someone's hey, been, been to, your been to house. his house. Somebody's been to your house. Yes, but it wasn't any of us. Jordan Swears. Jordan Swears. Yeah. 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 It's easy. Yeah, why? Why he's, him? Because he's, he's harmless. Like, he's clone Gus, basically. <laughs> he, he lives close by. We're like kind of pseudo neighbors. I live close by. You could come by. Oh yeah. No. I've been to Gavin's house. <laughs> One time, uh, I don't know if I've told the story. One time, uh, Jordan was out for a walk around the neighborhood, and he locked himself out of his house. <laughs> so I let him come over to. Oh, to, that was the wait. reason. Yeah, for. Uh, oh. For uh, someone to open his house for him. Wait, I I also lost my <clears throat> keys earlier. So. Weird. You Wait, can hang out with me, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found them. Oh dear. <laughs> All of a sudden, they're back in my pocket. I uh, so you talk about you know drinking wine, and I've been I've been lately I've been I trying was. to make an effort to drink more water. Oh, good. And That's a good I, thing. I, I started wondering: is there a point of like diminishing returns? Like, when do you start drinking too much water? I think the eight glasses a day thing is bullshit. It's a total bullshit. It's total bullshit. I think if you're completely clear when you piss, then right, that's, that's what made me think about way it. Way enough water. It, like, right? I was taking a piss, but and I was like, it looks like I'm pissing water. Like, it's just going right through me. It's not doing any good. It tastes like water. Go ahead. What? Like, could you drink so much water that it's pretty much water when it comes out? Like, like, bet, like surely, if you drank. Like five gallons, the yeah. last piss would be I think be you just... would deplete your body of nutrients though entirely at that point. Just wash everything out. You'd have nothing to flush out of your system at that point, so you'd be dead. If you guys have or a clear... Get... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you get that thing that would remember the lady died drinking too much water trying to win a Nintendo Wii? Oh yeah, I, I forgot remember. about that. A fucking Nintendo Wii. If you guys <sighs> pee... God, it's like the most successful console of all time, isn't it? Clear enough pee, do you not flush? No, no. I mean, you yes, flush? I flush every time. What's wrong with you? I was just asking. I thought it'd be silly if somebody did that. <laughs> well, I feel like if it touched the inside of your urethra, you should probably flush it. So totally. So when you pee clear, do you you just don't bother flushing? I mean, I, don't I, I live with a roommate who would not flush urine, and <laughs> it drove me fucking crazy. Oh, but that's it was, it was it was an environmental thing. You're, you're not supposed. Apparently, you're not supposed to drink more than a liter of water an hour. An hour. Because your who the fuck's doing that? Your kidneys cannot remove that. Kidneys can't Kid remove. Your kidneys cannot remove. What is it? Your kidneys can eliminate uh, so many uh, water a day. They can't get rid of more than one liter per hour. So to avoid <clears throat> hyponatremia symptoms, you should not drink more than a liter Oops. of water per hour on average. I chug Nalgene sometimes. Something uh, Gavin and I discovered when we were in India in Pushkar, it was 125 degrees, was they <sighs> gave us these World Health Organization salt packets. 
and they were like salts and electrolytes. They were and you, good. You put them in water. Loved them. And then you would drink one of those big, like this size. I'm, uh, is that a liter? It's probably a liter. Sure. Yeah, big, one of those big, tall bottles of water. You dump one of these packets in that and then drink it. Pretty sure it was a liter. I think it was one and a half. I think it was one because I had to drink it less than an hour. <laughs> so the, uh, the, when they when they showed us these things, I was like, okay, you know, what's this? This is salt. What's it gonna do? Drank it. You felt amazing. Really, just, it's hard to describe just the different feeling I had drinking these things. I've actually ordered them on Amazon since. What? Then. Just for a snack? Well, yeah, yeah this is it, them. It's just salt water. Are those are the ones I bought off Amazon. You gave me one of those. The ones we got in India did not look like that. They they looked almost generic, like they came out of. I think they're green and. I thought salt dehydrates you. How is it a rehydration salt? Yeah, hydration salt. It's just your. Equ uh, electrolytes. What? It's equilibrium. It's a uh, balance. It is it's just it's good juice. <laughs> they make us drink it's a good, uh, it's a good kind of salt. We used to eat pickles and mustard before football games because it helps with cramps by giving you electrolytes and whatnot. I think. I think salt's got a bad rap, Gus. I'm just saying, like, they tell you not to drink salt water. But you take salt pills. You can take salt pills for dehydration. Can you? I don't think so. For dehydration? Like, I know you put, like, a little bit of salt on your food, but, like, you're saying, like, here's a, a liter of salt water seems... Dangerous to me. Also, salt pills are just salt, right? What are salt pills? I've never heard of salt pills salt before. Pills. You just said salt pills like ten seconds ago. So but this is gonna bring <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna bring salt pills for runners. How dare you? I'm not a runner, obviously. Yeah. Is there a difference between hydration salt and just sodium? Like, what what part is bad? Which which part sucks? What, from sodium. what I understand, my understanding is your body has like a certain salinity to it and it, it can filter up to a certain salinity of water and is that why you salt float? water like ocean water is too saline so in order to filter it your body takes water from itself to dilute the salt water to make it less saline in order to be able to filter it and that's why it's like using your own water to try to dilute it i was in a lot of salt water the week after hmm. pax we uh we went, we went up to uh a place called it's on the map it's Called Cairns, C A I R N S. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? Cairns. Yeah, it's Cairns, which I think is That's just in France. Australian way of saying. They're just saying Cairns. that with their accent. They're Cairns. saying, yeah, but I'm sure I, they're saying Cairns. I'm going there for Christmas. Cairns. Are you? Yeah. Going to Australia for Christmas. Well, we got to go to. That's where one of the places where you can then take a boat and go out to the Great Barrier Reef. And Ellie is a dive master. Certified scuba diver, of so she, is. she could take us. <laughs> she she could take us out. We got to go to the Great Barrier Reef, and it's uh, from what I understand, those tours are not going to run for a whole lot longer. Well, the Barrier like, Reef's not going to be around for much longer. That's so the problem. You yeah. can't tour what's not there. Is it like visiting a grandparent on their deathbed? No, uh, not at all. It it's was like gorgeous. A way more extreme version of that. I'm sure I didn't get to go to the places that are extraordinarily bleached, mm. uh, but the places we were gorgeous. And there was occasionally you like a coral patch that had like a. Either a dark spot or a white spot that looked out of place, but I don't know. It's a weird environment down there too because I was just swimming. We we went through a, a what was called a swim through, uh, which I probably shouldn't have been doing at my level of scuba diving. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, earlier, basically through a cave, and I scraped the side of the wall. I was Ooh. very careful not to touch any coral the entire time, and I like cut my hand because you know it's basically like rock, and I got a little piece of coral in it. That was one of the most painful cuts I've ever had in my life. And getting that coral out, they're like, yeah, you got to get rid of that. Otherwise, it'll get deeply infected. So it's just a really bad splinter. Yeah, but yeah, a really bad splinter, but it's almost like an alien environment to where all the bacteria and all the living organisms down there, you should not be exposed to, you know. And it, everywhere you look is something that can probably kill you or infect you. It's like getting the little black eye drop in Prometheus. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like that. You said alien environment. Hey, listen, here's, I saw Alien Covenant on the plane. This is a movie we can talk about this, right? Yeah. I feel like the aliens in Alien Prometheus, I know that's not what it's called, and Alien <laughs> Covenant, I feel like those aliens were far superior to the aliens that, that we end up with later. But they make a big deal about getting to the evolution of Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Yeah. And am I wrong? Even I never, I never saw Covenant. The, the, Which one? The, the dog, the white little dog. Yeah, ones? the little white ones, and it's so, and it's like the fact that it's like if you step on a spore, it infects you. You don't have to it's look in ear. a fucking egg like an idiot and get hit <laughs> in the face. You know, it's like it can infect you through. The, it's an airborne alien. That's twenty thousand times worse. Yeah, but the the xenomorph an you know, alien killed like nine people. You mean the alien itself? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, dopes on a freighter. I mean, they didn't have any guns or anything. 
I think he's, I mean, once the soldiers came, I mean, in Aliens 2, they're like, they killed a thousand of these things. Like, it was yeah. no big deal. Like auto turrets. Yeah, it was fucking badass. I think that was cut, cool. actually. They cut that out. Yeah. That's a really oh, cool, okay. that's a really cool deleted scene in Aliens. Yeah, I watched that. that I had the extended version. That's it was like 15,000 rounds per turret, and they're just pouring. And you in, see it tick down to, like, yeah. there's like seven bullets left or something. And it's then like, they go away at that point. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, they're gone. And then everybody saved. Everybody, all the aliens are gone forever. <laughs> but I don't know. It just seems like it, it, the the mechanic what? of the two stage life cycle of the current alien, it just seems unnecessary when compared to what it came from. Well, the Prometheus, so they have to have like stakes for the new movie because that's like the whole oh. You know, yeah, I get what you're saying, but it's a prequel, so that makes it weird. I know, but I mean, it's the same thing as the prequel trilogy for Star Wars, related back to Star Wars. Hey, uh, like, people. they're like, oh, you know, the architecture and the ships are look way more advanced, you know. Just, hey, where's, where's Eric? We should, so since we're talking about movies, in, we just get Eric up here. In Alien Covenant, um, correct me if I'm wrong, are they on a mission to, like, populate an area so they send, like, five couples or something? Yeah. No, it's, a col it's a colony ship. Why don't they send, like... A hundred women and three dudes. It seems like that's well, a they, weird race show. They listen they, to you. They send, they send a whole ship full of people. There's like people in hyper sleep. Yeah, that was just yeah, the, crew. Just the crew. Oh, that, that was the crew. Following. Okay, I haven't seen yeah. the movie. The colonists are in the deep oh, okay, sleep okay. in the back. Yeah, and it, there's embryos. In James Franco. <laughs> don't even talk about him. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> what? What? No, don't worry he's, about it. He's Go great ahead. in the movie. Yeah, he does great performance. Really, great. really good great performance. Great climber. What? What? Yeah. He's on, He's on fire. He's on fire, dude. I'm gonna read one more thing before we get to Eric, and then we'll we'll loop Eric in for this discussion about Eric, you're Alien Covenant. You Eric for a ad read here. Uh, I want to remind everyone: this episode received podcast is also brought to you by Casper, a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Casper's mattresses are designed by humans for humans, not aliens. If you're an alien, you do not get a Casper mattress. Uh, they combine multiple supported memory foams for a, sleep, a quality sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Casper's breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature throughout the night. They're not just a mattress company. Casper offers a wide array of products to ensure an overall better sleep experience. Talk about it many times. I love my Casper, my favorite mattress I've ever had to sleep on. Uh, you can buy it easily online, completely risk-free. It'll be delivered right to your door in a compact box. Considering we spend one third of our lives on a mattress, it's so important to truly sleep on a mattress before committing. That's why Casper gives you 100 nights to try it out. Start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Get $50 toward any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash RT and using promo code RT at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's $50 towards any mattress by visiting casper.com slash RT using promo code RT at checkout. Okay. Eric, you're, you're... Twitter's follow up the real quick from Twitter. Yeah. Salt pills were common during World War II to help soldiers retain their body's water until they could find a good source of water. So salt helps you retain water when you're in a situation where you'll be shedding water. I guess as long as it's not too salty? Yeah. Everything in moderation, right? I sure. guess. All right, so everybody say hello. This is Eric Vespi. Hey, Eric, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, Eric. Hi, everybody. Eric, we've, we've known for a long time. I've known, I've known you. We're, many, we're, many years. Many years. Yeah. 15 years. I feel like I've hung out with you more in other countries than this Oh, one. always. <laughs> <laughs> What other countries have you hung out with Eric in? New Zealand? Yeah? Mm -hmm. That would make sense. I like your shirt. So, oh, <laughs> I told you! I <laughs> said he was- he said, can I wear this shirt on the podcast? And I said, Blaine's on it, so he's gonna fall in love with your shirt. Instantly. It's, it's, it's a Star Wars good, bad, and the ugly shirt. Not the good, the bad, and yeah. the Wookiee. But Eric, you recently left what I consider to be really the first blog mm. ever. Uh, it, ain't it cool news where yeah. you were an entertainment editor for how long? Uh, I started writing for that site when I was about 16 years old. That's crazy. So, so uh, back in the old, in internet age, that means I'm about 350, I think. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you're yeah, amongst no, friends. It, you, you have to like remember, like back in the wild, wild west days of the internet, like people like barely figured out dial-up at that point, right? So, mm -hmm. Ain't It Cool got to be one of the very first uh, places on the map that would actually talk about movie geek stuff so it was the first place like all these people like I grew up in a little town called Sunnyvale uh, and it's not so little anymore because it's Cupertino area but uh, nobody liked movies around there as much as I did anyway so like when there's a lots of little me's around and when the internet hit you know the the, the community uh, uh, gathered and ain't it cool was right at the forefront of that yeah and now you're at the No. And what's your yeah. official title at the No? I am senior writer, uh, senior entertainment writer. Senior entertainment writer. Okay. Yes. Isn't yeah. So your uh, your, your uh, avatar on Twitter, Robert Shaw from yeah. Jaws. Holy shit! Yeah. I knew who you were before I knew who you were. <laughs> I'm sneaky, sneaky that way. No, that's cool. Yeah. Well, no. Well, 
Eric, he went by the name Quint for years, which mm-hmm. is why then the Robert Shaw, because Quint from yeah, yeah. Jaws' favorite movie, fair to say? What's that? Favorite movie's Jaws? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, the only, uh, of course, I probably saw it when I was a kid, but you have an original print of Jaws that we got to watch. Uh, I, I have a friend who has a 35 millimeter print. Is that what it is? Okay. It. Uh, I have a 16 millimeter print, and this is actually really uh, interesting. I'm going to drop a big name here. Uh, but I have a, uh, a 16 millimeter print that's a TV print. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which means it was it it's a cut that was only meant for TV. Like back in the old days, they would need to fill a certain space, and if a movie's like Jaws is like a little over two hours, and so that's more than the the time that they could fill when they add in commercials. So yeah. they like had to cut in like deleted scenes and stuff like that. So there's a very famous uh, Quint introduction that was cut where he's like kind of giving shit to this kid in a music mm-hmm. store. And uh, and like makes him cry and all this stuff and it's the first time you meet him in the movie and nobody ever got to see that until the DVD came out, um, but my 16 millimeter print has this uh, scene in it and um, in 2004 or five I got to go to the set of War of the Worlds and meet Steven Spielberg who's one of my idols and so I brought that up because you know I'm trying to impress Steven Spielberg I guess <laughs> um, and uh, and I'm like hey I have this cool print that has this stuff and there's like little things in there that like n- have never made any DVD just like a shot of Brody walking down a street um, and I'm like it's you know this is really cool that you know I have this right you know Steven love me and be impressed by me <laughs> and uh, and he just kind of looked at me he goes you got something I don't have and then like walked away and I'm just like all right cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I win this time Steven Spielberg <laughs> you can punch that story up a little bit I've always been jealous because Eric gets to do the coolest stuff mm. him being a fan of Jaws like the, he's Jaws Blaine is like his Star Wars for you Star mm-hmm. Wars. he got to was it the 40th anniversary of Jaws or 30th he got to go interview all the members of the surviving cast mm. and Steven Spielberg in Universal Studios Park in the island where the Jaws <laughs> comes out for the tram that goes by <laughs> and he get that was his set to interview all of them was that this thing am oh, I telling d- the story right yeah no yeah. well yeah I, I got to talk to Joe Alves who's the production designer and the guy that kind of made you know the shark work um, and Carl Gottlieb mm-hmm. uh, who was the one of the writers and he also played the uh, newspaper guy in the movie um, had Rory Shatter died by that point yeah, he, he okay. had gone. Um, I've still never met uh, Dreyfus. Like, uh, I'm I'm assuming he would uh, uh, make me cry uh, uh, because he's supposedly not the nicest dude in the world. Oh, really? Uh, I kind of like that. Uh, but um, no, but that was really awesome because, you know, every as a kid, you know, you go to Universal Studios and you take the tram tour. And when you're as big of a Jaws nerd as I was, like, that was the thing. We go to Universal because I wanted to see the shark. And so here we are sitting, and in the background, the tram's going by, and the shark's jumping out. So I have this video interview of, like, me and Carl Gottlieb, and he's talking in the background. There's people screaming in the tram and, you know, the shark jumping out (laughs) of the water. But the coolest part about doing that wasn't actually sitting and talking to people. It was afterwards, like, doing that, our dead time in between. So I'd wait for the trams to go by, and they would just be silent for, like, four or five minutes. And as the shark, like, reset itself and all that, and I would just go up and, like, take a picture in front of the Jaws sign, you know, the, the, the... you know, uh, uh, Amity, sign. Amity sign, yeah. You know, stuff like that, and uh, and just kind of like, I mean, you see a section of it you never see from a point of view, like go behind the scenes. Um, What's this uh, movie for you, Gus? What's like your movie yeah. that like you, that you like more than anybody else? You think it might be Rushmore? Really? Yeah, that's a good one. I've probably watched Rushmore a couple hundred times. I'm gonna guess Gavin's. <laughs> I, I, I want to guess too. I'm gonna guess it's Hot Fuzz, Goldfinger. Caligula. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Get out of here! Really? Love it. As a kid, that's that was the movie I watched the most. My, my, I, a lot of people like it. When Nature Calls or the original? Pet Detective, the original. The original. How dare you? <laughs> my, mine would probably be The Matrix. I still love The Matrix mm-hmm. an exceptional amount, and I can watch The Matrix. We've seen that. <laughs> we saw We've that, seen together. that together. Oh, really? Yeah. It, it, I watched it on a plane. It, it holds up okay. But one of the, before we say goodbye to Eric, I do want to talk about well, one thing, which is yeah. Thor. I have Thor. something I want to bring up too. With, well, with yeah. Eric, if it's okay. okay. Yeah. He, 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 there's there's I don't know. I don't want to steal your thunder, like riding for the no. We're gonna we're gonna talk in a second about uh, Thor Ragnarok. Talk about stealing thunder. All right, what do you got, guys? What are, what are your thoughts about these rumors about uh, Disney potentially acquiring Fox? What the fuck is that about? That's uh, that's uh, my understanding is those talks are kind of dead, uh, which uh, but I think it's eventually going to happen. It's super exciting. Um, 
You would get the Marvel movie, like the culmination. We, of- it would essentially bring X Men and, and, more importantly, in my view, Fantastic Four back over to um, Marvel. Um, and I'm not Torch? saying that I think it would be less cool to have X Men within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but for whatever reason, Fox just cannot make a good Fantastic Four movie to save their lives. Nope. They made good X Men movies, so um, I don't eh. know. I think eventually that they are gonna. One. Huh? That last one was well. They made a oh, bunch of pop- yeah. I, I, I mean, Logan, X-Men... Logan was amazing, though. Logan was like, good. Logan was. Do- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. That I give X Men awesome. credit for kicking off the last decade and a half of comic book movies. For sure. Yeah. 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 Before X Men, the only com- comic book movie I can think of was like Unbreakable, and Tank it was like Girl. a movie that like tricked you into going to watch it. Blade. Punish. Blade. Blade. Yeah. Blade, yeah. Blade. Blade beat them to it, but it was really the double shot of X Men and Spider Man that yeah. like really kicked off this superhero thing that we have now. And now um, I just I just read Thor Ragnarok this opening weekend. It is the seventeenth release in a row by Marvel that opened at number one. Yep, nice. It's, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah, that's their crazy. track record's incredible. How many um, movies per year are they putting out at this point? Uh, we is get like, this is the third Marvel of the four year. Or yeah. Five? yeah, I think they're trying to aim for two the, or three. They crush because uh, we have what Black Panther and Infinity Wars next year. Yeah, God, I'm so excited for Black Panther. Are you really? Yeah. Yeah, there was a trailer in there. Uh, yeah. You know, I gotta say one thing about this run of comic book movies, which as a kid I was wanting to see these movies, and I think what's really great about where we are, this era of cinema with all these comic book heroes making their way in the mainstream, is I think it's proven something that all of us growing up as geeky kids realized, and that is that Marvel is way fucking better than DC. <laughs> and I know I will go to my grave saying that. I don't know how anybody can argue that Batman. DC is on the level of Marvel but Batman. in any way at this point. <laughs> well, you and know fucking it's, Superman. You know what's really interesting is when I was a kid, like I was all about Marvel comics, but I was, you know, uh, as, as for the reading material, but it was DC movies. It was Superman the movie. It was Batman. Well, they're making them. Well, that, yeah. I mean, that's true. But, you know, it's just a weird kind of dynamic that that uh, I was just thinking about earlier today with that, with that news. You know, like the Roger Corman Fantastic Four? Yeah, oh, it's so great. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're talking about... It, almost as bad as the Fox Fantastic Four movies. You're talking about <laughs> oh, wow. Marvel having 17 movies open at number one. You know, they with this, with Thor Ragnarok, they've crossed... Five billion dollars in North American box office, mm. Wait, and they were purchased for four billion. Right. Think about that. I remember you talking about that on the podcast. Four billion. Yeah. And then Star Wars, I think, sold for four point two. Mm-hmm. Was it? Am I get am I close? Yeah, it was about four for each. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it was interesting that Star Wars as a franchise was it's worth like as much Minecraft. as all of Marvel. Yeah. I'm looking forward to if 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 uh, Marvel and Disney get hold of. Fantastic Four. Mm. I just know that Tony Stark's going to make an appearance in a Fantastic Four movie. Is he contractually obligated to <laughs> be in every Marvel movie, or to at least be mentioned in every Marvel movie? Uh, he's mentioned in Thor. He's yeah. mentioned in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah his clothes. clothes make it to Thor. He probably wants to be in every movie, right? <laughs> probably. I mean, they're paying him all the money in the yeah. world. They might as well use him while they can. Well, and the dude, you also have to remember that before Iron Man, Downey was just out. He was out of Hollywood. He wasn't insurable. It's like he—he, he, I know he personally feels um, a lot of uh, uh, that he owes Marvel a lot for Dead. giving well, his career back. And yeah, but Marvel owes a lot to John Favreau and 100%. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, true. I mean, it, the you know you, when you have like the people like Chris Evans are like always talking about it's like oh maybe this will be my last Captain America. Maybe I won't resign yeah. the contract. It's like I think we're gonna have Downey. Pretty much until Marvel doesn't want him anymore, which I doubt uh, is going to happen. Right. Then he'll get his Logan at the very yes. end. I you assume he also likes playing that character. It's an interesting character. It's interesting. Captain America is a boring character. Oh. <laughs> <He's just not. laughs> I can see why Chris Evans is maybe getting bored with that role. Did you see the? He's just cr- like buff and punches, and he has to be nice. What's wrong with that? But he's nothing wrong, wrong with it. It's just it's not. There's not as much depth as there is with Tony Stark. I don't know. They had fun with him in. Uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming, mm. like all of his PSAs that he made. That's true, and it's that's kind of a fun they way to get around shitty superheroes by making them funny. Yeah, like the, even the opening Avengers two, where he says, "What does he say?" Language to everybody when they're <laughs> <laughs> language. <laughs> did Cap just say language? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I I'm really excited about the direction things are going. Did you see the uh, the Chris P- Pratt Halloween photo of mm. him with his kid? His kids dress as Captain America, oh, yeah. and Chris Pratt's walking down the sidewalk with him, and it's literally, he, he must have spied the photographer, he's just going like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> was look that, at that was fucking that like kid. Paparazzi, paparazzi photo, or was that someone who, who he knew took that picture? I don't know, I assumed it's paparazzi if it's a famous person, you know. Yeah, must be the nicest. It's also a good it photo, me. you know. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> yeah, it was Eric in the bush. I so, thought Thor Ragnarok. I thought Thor was my favorite Marvel movie that wasn't the Avengers. 
Hmm. Really? The first one? The first one. I thought it was going to be garbage because I don't know how you could make a movie about a Norse god superhero and somehow they pulled it off. What? But, oh, I was going to say Winter Soldiers. But when you compare it, though. when you compare it to the first Thor or the first Captain America, it's night and day in terms of the style they have now where it's just like, it was just a comedy movie. It was a comedy movie with awesome punching and improv and it was great. <sighs> I just you should go see Thor Ragnarok then. You yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, this no. one you just saw. Yeah. The new one. Okay. Yeah. I thought the original Thor was that. Yeah. No, I'm saying I, the original Thor was nothing like the one we just no. No, Oh, I, just I got you. I, I'm sorry. I feel like since they're in the same wheelhouse, like Disney should, or I guess Lucasfilm should take cues from Marvel. Like Taika Waititi did something fucking amazing with that movie and that character. And if Star Wars would kind of like, you know, relinquish some control a little bit in like, you know, like the well, Spencer and Lord thing, I think we could see more we're, variety. We're at different stages in those cycles, right? Like Marvel Cinematic Universe, they've built out phases starting, you know, even before the first Iron Man. Like it's we're going to have, we have your serious movies, then you're going to get a little crazy. And now we're like so far removed from all that. Everyone knows the characters. You can have some stuff that's a little crazy, like Guardians of the Galaxy. You couldn't have led with Guardians of the Galaxy, this right? Is that like comes like a beginning of phase three. Star Wars. They're having to re-earn trust after the prequels. So you got to play it safe for a few movies, and then you start. That put them at phase zero. Right. The they they might have been at phase negative one. So <laughs> I feel like they, they already have, like, they have that system in, uh, in place, though. It's like you got the main ones, seven, eight, nine, and then you can have the fun side anthology movies. I mean, yeah. what do you think? We'll see if Solo what happens with Solo. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, Solo, I think, was supposed to be, like, that wacky version, and then they just kind of like, nah, we got to keep it... Well, I think I think Marvel had their time uh, where they kind of got backfire for ha holding on too tight and, and doing too much by committee. That happened with Edgar Wright leaving Iron or not Iron Man, Ant Man. Ant -Man yeah. It happened with uh, uh, Alan Taylor and Thor: The Dark World, which ended up being, in my opinion, the worst of the MCU movies. Really, worse than Iron Man Three? Uh, well, you don't like Iron Man Three? I love I Iron Man Three. Everybody I hate hates Iron, Iron Man Three. Yeah, he's, I he love doesn't Iron have the suit 3. for like half the movie. But anyway, he's got that ahead. stupid kid helping him. I, I hate talking about movies with Eric because when yeah. Eric says something, I go, "Oh, my opinion is wrong." <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in this case, you are wrong. Like I, I, was <laughs> I was expecting you to say Iron Man Two, and I'm like, "Well, that that's like a a writer strike movie, so they didn't have a script for half of that." So, but like Iron Man Three, it, it's Shane Black. Iron Man Three is is kind of like what I love so much about Thor Ragnarok is it's very much a Shane Black movie. Yeah. Thor Ragnarok's very very much a uh, Taika Waititi movie. Um, and to me, that like, movie. that's the most exciting thing about the, the film. I think it it goes a little bit too far with the silliness because there's, like, some real death, like, on-screen death stuff that happens in Ragnarok that should have been a big, had, had a big impact, but everybody's joking around it the whole time. So, so like, it, to me, I, I think they aired a little bit too much on the side of silliness over emotion. But I yeah. can't be upset about that because it also shows that Marvel's letting go a little bit. Right, and that they're they're not as you know holding on as tight. They're not doing it by committee. They're letting the filmmakers have uh, have their reign. And I think Lucasfilm uh, will eventually get there if they haven't all already. I mean, I've heard Ryan Johnson's got you know had pretty fair reign on Last Jedi, but like you know, I, I have no idea you know if that's just okay, because he's awesome or if it's <laughs> because you know. Uh, you know they just like him or what? But um, but yeah, I mean they're, they're definitely fumbling right now with with the solo thing and with uh, yeah, uh nine you know uh trevaro getting kicked off a nine they, and they just wrapped solo like two weeks ago they right? did yeah pretty recently and, and they had they hired a journeyman director to come in and do it ron howard mm. to to uh reshoot it it took him like four months of to, from when he took over right like four or five yeah, months yeah i think they... i saw something online i have no idea how true it is because it was on the internet but i think i saw <laughs> somebody say that it was about he should reshot about 80 percent of the movie Damn. fuck me that's a lot yeah, I mean nine is also a problem too because I think the issue that they're facing is how are they going to deal with Carrie Fisher and her her characters? Yeah, I'm dying to find out what like how they deal with her and I'm in eight. I'm fucking bummed because like I know that they had something set, you know, in place mm. where they would have taken Leia, but now we'll never know. Yeah, you know? no, because if you look at the, you know, now it's kind of becoming clear. You know, episode seven was Han's movie. Episode eight's Luke's movie, and oh, nine would have been Leia's movie. Fuck yeah, right? you're absolutely like, right. That probably would have been the case. Yeah, no, it's, uh, but already, like, if you guys saw the last trailer for, like, that emotional mm -hmm. beat, without spoiling too much if somebody didn't want to watch the trailer, but I'll there's an emotional beat where, you, between Carrie Fisher and, and Kylo Ren, that's, like, where they're not anywhere near the same place, but they connect. Yeah. And and there's more emotion in that, like, four seconds in the trailer than in, in any of the prequels. As someone who loves movies, yeah. talking about you, do you like the trailers? I love the trailers. Okay. I I, so it. there was a trailer. I'm very for, anti trailer. For you, you mean trailers in general or the trailers for Star Wars in particular? I just know I don't watch any trailers. Yeah. So I was at Ragnarok last night. 
it came on. Mm -hmm. I realized instantly. I think the first shot was Walkers, mm -hmm. and it was the Star Trek trailer. I immediately Star stood it was up. The Star Trek trailer. The Star Trek. I say Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> so I, I, me I immediately bailed out and was. I don't want to watch the Star Wars trailer. I've avoided it this whole time, and I and I left the theater and then came back two or three minutes later. I did that too uh, for Blade Runner twenty forty nine, mm -hmm. and it came on, and I was on a date. With Alana, and I remember it came up, and I was like, mm. <laughs> and I looked like a fucking crazy person. But I didn't want to hear. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I'd probably enjoy myself a lot more if I avoided trailers. But but like growing up, that was the thing that got me excited about movies. Yeah. Like, there's an art form to a good trailer. I love the anticipation, but too many, too often, trailers do ruin. It, oh, all, all big the time. Key moments in movies, but I I, I can't help but be excited. It's, it's trophy it, just brings up with like the Suicide Squad. It's it's so interesting. Like that, they need to have a case study on that because it's just like it made the movie look so. Like something mm -hmm. completely different than the movie. Ragnarok Fox. spoiled a lot of stuff in the movie. Yeah, it spoiled yeah, a ton sure of stuff. The oh stuff. man, some big moments. Because oh, Alana right? and I were talking, she said if if that reveal that was in the trailer yeah. hadn't happened, if they kept that big character reveal secret, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, can we just say it because everybody knows it's that. in the trailer. So the sure. Hulk, yeah. If they had kept the Hulk under wraps, holy shit, can you imagine? And I hate when the movie presents something as it's a big secret. But the trailer has, you know what's coming, you know? Well, like the very first piece of art for Ragnarok, anything that they released was Thor and, and Hulk. Hulk fighting. Yeah, he's on the poster Coliseum. too, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh, it's a good flick. I, you know, I don't know, but the, the anticipation of it, it's like, you know, I'll always... I, I hate the Star Wars prequels with a passion, but... Like, I'll always look fondly on those two weeks leading up to Phantom Menace and just kind of yeah. th that anticipation. <laughs> and I kept and out <laughs> behind the Metropolitan for uh, Everybody for got Pizza I Hut remember. and KFC so they could try to get the, get I, the I remember exclusive stuff. Yeah. reading your journal way back on the old, old site. Yeah. Old, old site. And you would watch like slightly more of the Matrix Reloaded trailer, right? I didn't want. And then see you it. would turn it off, and then you'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna watch it again and get a little bit further." And then two seconds that movie was. Man, a I know you would update at the end of every journal, like picked up another two seconds of the Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> yeah, trailer. That's great. But then that movie was a big. That's when I was living in Puerto Rico, and for some reason, the Matrix Reloaded opened a week later in Puerto Rico than the United States. <laughs> so I had to tell everyone in the U.S. like, if it was good or bad, don't tell me, don't talk to me at all about that movie. Then I went in and watched it. I was like. Oh god! Why didn't you tell <laughs> like me? I came out and <laughs> nobody like, wanted to talk like, about it. <laughs> they, I'm sure that everyone was biting their tongue, like wanting to tell me just not to bother. The Phantom Menace trailer, though, like with mm -hmm. the Darth Vader, and then also, by the way, Phantom Menace trailer gave away a huge moment in the fucking film. Double lightsaber. The double yeah. lightsaber. That, that was that was That's not really a spoiler. It it so cool Can you imagine how much you would have lost your shit if you'd seen Darth Maul pull out a double lightsaber? We're all gonna go see the movie anyway. Save some of that shit did for he, the cinema. Right? Did he? Did they both come out at once? No, he does one, no, he and just, then he turns he did, it, yeah. okay, that's and then badass. one comes out. That's badass. Clearly that's a reveal. Yeah. Clearly a reveal. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they were like, Matt, nobody's nobody's excited about this movie. All right, before we say goodbye to Eric, first of all, Eric, it's great to be finally working with you. I've known you for many years. Eric, Eric's been very influential over Rooster Teeth in ways that I don't think a lot of people realize. Eric is one of the hosts of the poker game where I met Jack mm -hmm. and Daniel Fabello and other people. I would credit I'm you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize for Jack every time I see Bernie. <laughs> I, I would uh, I would credit uh, Eric also as being the reason why Elijah Wood was in Red vs. Blue. Mm. He was the person who helped us work that out. So glad to finally be working with you. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad we can now sound somewhat intelligent. You can correct us, you know, over here whenever we talk about movies. Yeah, so. it's just Chain Black stuff. That's the only time that I'm, I'm right. <laughs> it's it's much easier to hear it from you than the angry anonymous comments that I'll read of. Uh, who have the internet on their side Well, the that's me time. too. I just left my phone over there. <laughs> just look everything up. But before we go, what's the comic book movie that you guys want to see? Like, like that's coming out? No, no. That if the comic book character that you that you would love to see in a movie, I'm or, Green Lantern. I'm, I'm the Mosque. I'm not a comic guy. I never read comics. No way, really? Mm -mm. Nothing at all. Nothing. Missed okay. Them. Archie. The the uh, the the comic series that got me into comic books was the Dark Phoenix saga for mm -hmm. for X Men with the Hellfire Club and all that stuff. Uh, and they've never they've done it, but they've never done it right. Brian Singer's doing another stab, and I don't. Have much. Uh, Same with the actress that plays Jean Grey, um, Sophie Turner. She Famke no. Jansen. What? Famke. What's her? What? Famke Jansen. Yeah. yeah. So she was in The Famke Faculty. Jean. Yes. And oh, then, which wasn't that one of the first movies you reported on? Was that not? That's wrong. I would argue it's Sophie Turner. Yeah, I was. I was there when I was like sixteen. Yeah. And yeah, uh, or seventeen. Yeah. Matt was working on that movie, and I remember she got cast as Jean Grey, and yeah. I told Matt at the time she's got one of the coolest characters ever. Mm. Because this arc that this character goes through is incredible. It's one of the like seminal stories 
ever told in comic books, and then they yeah. just had never did it. They yeah. never really tackled the. Well, uh, the I mean, three. they did. They just fucked it up. Brett Ratner did Brett it Ratner, next three, yeah. Ratner, and, oh then, uh, and now weird. Brian Singer's doing it again. But the problem is, there's no build up to it. It's like they just introduced her as kind of like a side character in the last X Men movie. Didn't they kind of do something where she got a little crazy evil on the apocalypse thing? Like she uh, tapped into uh, some power. Yeah, a little bit. But again, it just happens it's right away. Enough. I mean, that's the you have to love Jean Grey first. Right, True. and then and then uh, you know see her with the powers, and then there's got to be that slow uh, process while the powers take her over. That's slow what that's what burn. makes Dark Phoenix. <laughs> ha, that's what makes Dark Phoenix interesting. I'll be here all night. So, yeah, <laughs> I, uh, so, I I would love to see them do that for real. I'd also love to see Craven from uh, Spider Man. Yeah, Craven's oh, Craven the Hunter. Shit, that'd be yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. I want to see uh, Moon Knight. I'll know we're at the like the barrel, like bottom of the barrel, end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe when they have like uh, Moon Knight or Cloak and Dagger. Aren't they Cloak and Dagger? They're doing a TV series. Yeah. Are they really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, That's here true. we go. Yeah. <laughs> then like the eighth generation of these movies is gonna be incredible. We have like Rom the Space Knight movies <laughs> and things like that. And it's gonna be awesome. With Beta Ray Bill and yeah. was Beta Ray Bill? I heard he th he was featured in an Easter egg you, in you, Ragnarok. You see, him a, you see uh, it's in the in Thor Ragnarok. There's like a the tower is made up of the heads of all of the Grandmaster's champions. Yeah. And one of the heads is Beta Ray. You've I also totally seen him that. in Guardians of the Galaxy. There was a horse head skeleton on a human's body. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was like That's a subtle. Yeah. Did the collector have that or something? I don't know. Uh, no, it was on the planet that uh, Star Lord was like doing the dance thing on. He, he walked by a Beta Ray Bill guy. I don't know what that was. It was like right at the beginning I'm, of the movie then. I'm yeah. done, by the way, with Howard the Duck. Cameos and I'm, the interest in how they're so done. funny. I'm done. I'm done. So with, you're I'm waiting for it. the full features. No, nope, no, nope, it's already been made. You, you, you that, want the that, trilogies? Now you got to get a reboot. That, that's that's when you know it's over. <laughs> <laughs> when you get a fucking Howard the Duck reboot <laughs> with a, a practical suit and like no CG. Barf. Bro, yeah, as long free. as that means more duck boobs, then then I think that'll be cool. Oh, horrifying! <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> what you put that in my head? All duck right, press. Eric. Good to see you, man. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'll steal that shirt from you later. Okay. Bye, bye. I'm gonna read this other thing here. I want to remind everyone, this episode of Receive Podcast is also brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies makes feel-good undies your butt will be proud to wear. They'll be the most comfortable pair of underwear you'll ever own. And to check it out yourself, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. With tons of styles and patterns to choose from for both men and ladies, MeUndies will have the perfect fit for any personality. The MeUndies feeling is unmatched because they use a naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. For a limited time only, <laughs> check out MeUndies' first ever glow-in-the-dark print, Lights Out. Why not update your underwear drawer and glow at the same time? To get 20% off the best and softest underwear you'll ever own, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. They're seriously the best underwear you can get. Try them. Go get them. Rub yourself. It's true. Cover your whole body with them. Does anyone think hmm? it's damn irresponsible that Heimdall fights with the Bifrost sword? Uh, no. I like him. What if he breaks it or chips it and then he can't use the damn thing? Dude. How's all that thing gonna work if it's broken? I think it has like some sort of magic power protecting it. Sorry, where is it? Idris Elba? Is that his name? Yeah. 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 Anything he did in that movie would have been fantastic to me. Because on the plane home, I watched Dark, Dark Tower. Tower. Have you seen it? Is it bad? I've heard it's bad. It was rough, dude. It's like a young adult movie. But surely he's good in it. It's it just was, bad. It uh, Idris Elba is great in everything, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's it is hard watching someone be convincing in a totally unconvincing movie. Have you that seen that was a tough one for me? Have you seen Luther? Luther, I don't think I have. It's a TV show. Have you seen the King Arthur movie that's like cut by an MTV music video? The guy editor? Ritchie made it, right? What was that? It's a Guy Ritchie film. It came out earlier this year. I did. I was loading. I said, "Oh, it's a King Arthur movie that I haven't seen. I want to watch some knights fight and some Game of Thrones stuff." It's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Is it good? You don't remember? The, you remember the com I guess you don't watch trailers. You don't no. remember the commercial or anything for it? It was it was off putting. I turned it off after like fifteen minutes. Man from Uncle is great though. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Anybody else? It was okay. That? It was very, very stylized. Had, had a great style to it, dude. King, I King love Army Hammer and Henry Cavill, and I want Army Hammer to be Green Lantern. Hal Jordan, that'd be awesome. Army Hammer. Army Hammer is great. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's fucking beautiful and tall and must masculine. And go ahead. I like him a lot. I have a man crush on him and Ryan Gosling. I'll, I'll is stop. that like who you aspire to to make yourself I'd fuck be like those guys? You know, I'm not saying wow. I'm just saying Come like say straight it. up, like body aspirations. It's a big payoff. Uh, would, yeah, but they're like also like a foot taller than me, so mm. probably. Would not you be him. railed by them or just rail them? <sighs> uh, up for negotiation, honestly. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're just good looking, cool guys. I'd like to hang out with them. <laughs> you know, just like play some PUBG, blow each other, and play PUBG. You know, you went. Wait, you want to watch them blow each other? Uh, or they blow me. One of the two. Got it. I hope my parents don't watch this. Oh, why would they? <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I hope nobody takes a clip of it and posts it on Twitter for them to see. That'd be unfortunate if this is the social media clip for Rooster Teeth. <laughs> So anybody watched that? <laughs> speaking, speaking of things that have been run into the ground, um, have you, did anybody watched that stupid ass David Pumpkins animated special? Oh no, you're a David saw, Pumpkins fan. I, no, I, I thought the it. I thought the skit was funny. I dressed yeah. up that year, but a, a year later they produced that stupid animated thing. They aired it like at ten or ten at ten thirty p.m. like a normal SNL time slot, and. It was bad. Awful. It was just bad. And I don't understand why they aired it that late. It was like there was nothing. Was it Tom Hanks? Yeah, it was Tom Hanks' voice. Like there was nothing. It, they, they should have just aired that in prime time. Like they could have shown that to kids. There's nothing weird about it. They, How uh, long was it? 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, they, man, did a a, they did another 30 minutes? Yeah. Fuck me. They did a, uh, a really funny Halloween skit where it was like a roller coaster ride. Did you see that one? Um, I don't remember. What was it? Uh, it, it was the electronic or like the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. I thought it wasn't like David Pumpkins quality. Twitter wants to let us know the Dark Tower is based on a Stephen King book. So. Yeah, oh, no oh. fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. But they, the person went on to point out that those movies are always kind of hit or miss. Which it's a great example of that. I know some people really like the it. original It with Tim Curry. Uh, I, as someone who grew up reading the book. And I was older when that movie came out. I was so disappointed in it, the first one. I like all the stuff with the kids. The new stuff, the the new one is such, sounded so creepy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did, Did you read the book? No, I, I you can't read. possibly be creepier than some of the stuff that happens in that book with the kids. It's an orgy, right? Yeah, that's not an orgy. Did you say you liked Thor Ragnarok? You liked it? I did. I enjoyed Thor. 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 I really liked the weird choice of the '80s synth soundtrack vibe they had going on. Yeah, I loved it. Have you watched Hunt for Wilder People? No. He does that like throughout that movie and it's fucking amazing. It's a really, it's a very fun movie. I'm gonna say something that happens very early in the movie. It doesn't spoil anything, but it does potentially like kind of spoil a joke, which is Thor happens across a play where it's the story of Loki essentially. <laughs> and like Thor is like his buddy who's like, oh, you're the best and everything. And this play, it's meant to be like shitty actors playing Thor and Loki. And Loki's really funny and you recognize the actor who's playing Loki right away. Did you recognize who was playing Thor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't, well, do we want to say yeah, it? Yeah, sure, say it. No, no, fuck you. You're not going to pin this on me. Oh, it's, it's his, his brother. brother. Yeah. It's his brother playing. Oh. Lee, Lee, not Lee, Luke. Luke. Luke Hemsworth. The one that's in Westworld. Yeah. Uh, who, who, really, that that to me was, I love to make that phone call going, hey, we need you to play a shitty Thor. Did you see Odin? Who played Odin? Yeah, yeah, I did. I took it, I, I actually didn't recognize him, and I went I didn't and looked up the either. cast it, from that play. It was until he took off the eye patch, so I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. It's fun. The, the whole movie's fun, though, too. It's, uh, I did, did think there was a character in there. Uh, that could have been Beta Ray Bill, but wasn't there's an alien character in it that's really fucking funny and great. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I would I would highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies, I think. I feel like the style of the text and the posters didn't match the movie. Like they went super neon multicolored for like the text that says Thor Ragnarok at the yeah. end and the posters all that way. But the movie's not really like that. I think they probably veered away from that because of Guardians. Suicide Squad? Oh. I feel like Guardians did that a lot. It was just weird. Yeah, and I get the criticism some people have where it's it's in the vein of Guardians in the Galaxy, and people think they're trying to like glom onto the success of Guardians of the Galaxy. But Avengers movies don't need to do that. They're they're fine, mm -hmm. you know, on their own. I just think that somebody came in uh, and had a vision for what he wanted to make this Thor movie to be, and he he did. I also think, though, honestly, I think this movie is the one movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where. Like ten years from now, they're gonna say that one's not canonical. That's just ignore <laughs> that movie. That has that's not real. I found myself laughing. Lot major things happen in this movie, just flippantly. It, it was pretty crazy. There's like four character deaths. Where I was like, oh, oh okay, okay, sure. Yeah. I found myself laughing at just the most random, obscure moments, like uh, the character the director plays. Like a little piece Cord. of him, yeah, like yeah. a piece of rock falls off. He's like, oh, there's another one. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> just little lines like that. I was like, cracking up. Little throwaway stuff. I was yeah, laughing was, the entire time as well. That character's so funny. Yeah, but it's good. I liked it. Good movie. I want to watch it again. I'll probably watch it on a plane. Hey, do you want to go see it? Yeah, okay, never mind. You go on a plane and do it. How come fine. you didn't see it, Gus? Do you not go see movies on opening I normally wait a week or two. We Why? Do you find out if it's good or to avoid crowds? Just avoid crowds. I'm worried that we've overhyped it, actually. No. Uh, maybe. I went in with zero expectations. I never saw the trailer. I didn't know anything about it. I literally I leaned over great. to Alana and was like, low expectations for this one. And then I walked down and was like, oh, it's great. Because the last two Thor movies, in my opinion, have sucked. I went in with very specific expectations and it hit them. Completely. I mean, I was, I was, don't watch the trailer if you haven't seen it already because there was some really amazing stuff spoiled in it. Um, 
and it's the one thing we said is very obvious because that character is on the posters and is a huge part of all the marketing for the movie as well. But there's other elements in that movie that are just they're they're big moments. The trailer covers some stuff that happens in like the third act. I the trailer should stop at like the first or second act. I didn't realize that this is the first movie where Mark Ruffalo voices the Hulk. Oh, is that he doesn't normally do that? No, it was Lou Ferrigno before. Yeah. Oh, really? Up to this movie. I think I probably knew that at some point, but forgot it. That's really cool. Yeah, but I wonder why, like, why you didn't do it this time. More dialogue. Hulk, Hulk's a bigger part of it, you know. Yeah. Lou Ferrigno's not the best actor. Uh, so. And plus, also um, going back to what you said about them, it worked. Them having uh, holding back that Hulk was in the movie. Did you hear that thing about Mark Ruffalo accidentally live streamed the premiere of the movie? The first like few minutes of it, yeah. Did he really? Yeah, oh, they, like I guess, from his pocket. Or yeah, they took everyone's phones away at the premiere, but obviously he's in the movie, so they didn't take his. And the movie studio had asked him to do like an Instagram live stream uh, promoting the premiere. I fucking love this. And he forgot to turn it off and just put the phone down. <laughs> and he said that his phone was buzzing like crazy, but he didn't want to be the asshole who picks up his phone in the middle of the movie. <laughs> People were like texting him, like, Tur turn your phone off. You're live streaming. Oh my God. And I think it was like the first 10 minutes of the movie. That's great. Did he eventually realize or did yeah, eventually agent, the, like, the, the stream just ends? There hasn't been any really real major, major, major slip ups or leaks via that kind of social media stuff. Not that I can think of. I mean, obviously there's been some huge gaffes and things like that. And the internet has led to some incredible leaks of information. The biggest leak right now is the, uh, the paradise stuff, right? The, all the tax avoidance or the tax dodging yeah. happening. Yeah, that I, I haven't. I feel like that's still breaking as we're yeah. doing this. Like, there's still news coming out about. I, that. I don't even know what you're talking about. Did you know that? Because uh, Apple are involved in this now. They Apple have two hundred and fifty billion dollars in cash. That's crazy. That's a lot of cash. It's a lot of cash. It's a quarter of a trillion in cash. That's a lot of cash. Like the the amount that their money must vary day to day, just from the value of currency, must be insane. Let me like, tell you. Quarter of a trillion dollars, but would be a very different show than million dollars, but <laughs> actually there was an article I read that listed the stuff you could buy for a quarter of a billion, a quarter of a trillion dollars. It's like you could buy twenty two hundred F thirty five fighter jets. Jeez, that's insane. Twenty two hundred. Yep. That's pretty cool. Apple could start an, a fleet. You get bulk discounts. Some country. They get twenty five hundred. They get twenty five hundred. Twenty two hundred. You get one for free. How many are there? There's not twenty two hundred now, right? I doubt less there's than that, that in the army, so. probably. In the army, <laughs> yeah, the probably, not. <laughs> probably not. In the navy, I think has the bulk of their aircraft. I actually have no idea how many of those are in circulation. I don't know either. Okay, I'll look it I'm up. I'm gonna say twelve. Are, aren't those the shitty ones that there's like a bunch of graveyards and a lot of them are inoperable because they're just, they go ahead fell in disrepair. Or there's like some sort of article about it was just like government waste and there was like uh, people the main uh, plane that's used in the Air Force is just like a piece of shit plane. There, apparently. there are 231 of them as of March of this year. Really? So you could own 10 times more than exist in the world. If I worked at Apple, I'd just order 250 just so I could say I have more than the U.S. government. <laughs> They'd have a lot of cash left over. What they can would've... they do? Some sort of like super secret bad at like like Dr. Evil type thing? Like make a spaceship? And leave. It would be, just... Don't you feel like it would be hard to make an impact at a company that size with that amount of money? Like, what do you do on your day-to-day -day basis that gets you super? What's, you can what's your job? Donald Trump's it's my job to burn one million dollars a day. Yeah, that's what I do. I shovel it into the furnace. <laughs> right. And and there's more money behind it all the time. It's like when Valve released that statement, that metric that they make in revenue the equivalent of eight million dollars per employee per year, and we were fascinated at the time because. It, of course, the next day, everyone's like, I want to fucking yeah. raise if you're making $8 million right. per person at this company. But it's like, even that, it's, it's it, I think that can be detrimental to your motivation and your drive. Big companies, especially public ones, there's always that push and you can always bring in new people to help drive things forward. But I look at a company like Valve and I can't help but wonder if the success of the company has hampered the future success of that company. Like their success as a platform with Steam, they haven't made a game right. in how long? Well, they have that card game. Go out the, out. besides the card game, eight huh? years. It's been a long. What was the last one? Portal Two, right? Did Dota come after Portal Two, or is Dota around? I think Dota was. Left for Dead Two. No, Left for Dead Two was. What over. was the last? I saw last. I just typed Dota Two, and then I type Portal Two. If a company gets too too successful, makes like if Apple had ten Dota trillion. Dota Two was the last one. Okay, good call if this. Apple had ten trillion dollars in cash, would they eventually just be like, yeah? Right. Let's just stop making shit. Right. What's what's what's, what's the point? The, the iPhone, what's the end game? The iPhone twenty is they send everybody five hundred dollars. 
<laughs> so here you go. Like surely they're just forwarding Steve Jobs' vision or into the future beyond his life. But eventually Steve Jobs would have been happy with $10 trillion, right? So surely end it. Like why why continue? But how do you stop? I mean, that's the thing with capitalism. How do you just go, uh, and we win? Because you've won. <laughs> you've yeah, you come exactly. first. We're done. Top of the podium. Yeah, what do you do? You then lay you... off like fifty thousand people? I mean, keep paying them. There's enough cash. <laughs> just don't just have them not do anything. Damn, like why would they surely there's a point where you don't need to do anything? Also, it's it's at the at that point too, they're a public company, they always want to do better. It's like, oh, the iPhone X, it's selling a million less than the iPhone 7. So that's a bad thing. It's gonna hit our stock. I'm a guy at the company, I'm like, let's buy two million iPhone X's from ourselves. That's what I would do. I just, I just put them on order. We can return them after <laughs> the quarterly report. Holy shit, speaking of the iPhone 10, which you're calling the X. Oh, uh, I do call it the X. I do call it the X. So I was deciding whether to get Apple Care. I'm a dropper. I'm caseless, as you know. I do the Gavin Free Challenge. <laughs> you fail the Gavin Free Challenge. Your I, whole every, life is the Gavin Free every, Challenge. Every phone. It's I've, not going well. Uh, Apple Care Plus or whatever to get the quick replacement that's 100 bucks. That's 200 bucks. I, I'm saying a lot of numbers here. They're not. I, yeah, you're confused. You, you, you spend 200 bucks okay. getting Apple Care Plus, which means if you smash your phone, kick it into a lake or something, or you accidental damage, you get a new one for 100 bucks. So that's 300 bucks. You're right. So I was like, pfft. oh, I was looking at the list of all the phones. It's less than that just to get a new one out of coverage. Not the iPhone 10, however, because accidental damage without Apple Care, guess how much it costs to get a new one? How much? 550 bucks. But still, the difference between that and Buying a new getting one. the coverage for something that might not happen is that that's what puts me off like at best buy right. i would buy the extended service plan at everything i purchase if it was a reasonable amount of money but when the the extended service plan is 20% of the cost of the item i'm i'm just thinking in 4 years there's going to be like five new versions of this thing that i'm buying mm -hmm. at best buy i'm not going to want to replace it with that or it's you know it's just and i probably won't remember that i had it 20% is my definite cutoff for that probably i'd say over 15% i wouldn't even consider getting any kind of extended this, plan this phone is so expensive it's just it's but it's normal now like but you use it every right exactly. every minute of your day I always about. say I'm like I'm happy to spend mon money where I'll get use of it so like I, I have a nice mattress and a nice TV and a nice phone so that's that's the main good thing. strategy but I've just got to come to terms with the fact that now a phone potentially is like a four figure expenditure it's like a computer yeah but it is I use it more than my computer except you can't play games as well as your computer Yet. That's true. No 4K gaming. I'm, I just play everything on the Switch now. I love the Switch so much. You went from PC Master Race to Switch? <laughs> I love cool. Mario. I love him. He's a little bastard. It's really good. This I, I've been happy like playing Zelda have, going- have you, have you played Odyssey? No. Have going you? back and forth between handheld and the dock was great. Yeah. I've stopped playing Stardew. I had to break the news to Ashley earlier. Because Super Mario Odyssey What are you two going to talk about from now on? We'll just go back to our- Normal lives where we don't talk to each other. <laughs> don't have anything to say to each other. I like games that reward you with nostalgia. Mm -hmm. There's a moment in. Have you played Mario Odyssey? Yeah, I finished it. So the Mushroom Kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a there's a moon you get by something that you can you would only look at if you played Mario 64. Which one was that? So it's, at some point in Mario 64, if you got a certain amount of stars, a light shines down in Peach's castle onto the mat in the middle of the room, and you look up at it, and you. You go to the flying stage. Mm. So I, as soon as I got in Peach's castle, I was like, this is familiar. It's not the exact same, like, mm -hmm. there's not as many rooms. Mm. But just for the hell of it, I was like, I'm going to look up at the ceiling. And I, a moon came out of it when I looked at it in, in first person. Or, so a, like, or a star that yeah. they call moons for some reason. A star that's called a moon. <laughs> it's confusing. I just like that you're rewarded with that stuff. It's such a nice yeah. touch. I it's love like, the, the, the Super Mario 64 skin you can get. Oh, that's the suit that makes you go... Do you, like, turn all blocky? It makes you realize how... Shite Mario looked in Super Mario 64. Yeah, it was great at the time. Yeah. But he looks way better. Do they have the stretchy Mario face? I haven't played it yet. No. No. No, it's a bummer. It was my favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm in that phase where I finished Breath of the Wild, and now I don't want to start another game. Although, Stodgy. my current pick for game Shot of, of the year so far PUBG. Oh, man, I didn't think about that. Wolfenstein. One of my candidates for sure. That came out the exact same time as Breath of the Wild, and I thought got kind of buried under all the Breath of the Wild <laughs> hype. And Ooh. I know a lot of people think Breath of the Wild is their game of the year so far. Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn is about to come out with DLC. Right, comes now. out 
Was it today? Yes, I think it's today. Yeah, Monday. So we're recording this. And uh, so I'm tempted to go over and play that, but I probably won't. God, fucking Horizon Zero Dawn's probably the best game I've played this year. It's great. PUBG's yeah. good, though. Yeah. I, I probably put pub more time into PUBG than any other game, but I think Horizon Zero Dawn. Because Horizon Zero Dawn actually has, like, a story. An incredible story. Right, and, like, a, a, like a weight to it. PUBG's just like, shoot, 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 shoot start over. You <laughs> see, is that what you do? Right. Mine is run, 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 how did I die? Yeah. <laughs> start over again. That's exactly that, how every PUBG The close for me. quarters combat in that game is not good. I'm really glad though that they reset all the stats. How's the vaulting? I'm way better than It's not in yet. They, they made uh. an update just recently and they were very specific to say on Twitter that it was not the vaulting update. Mm. What does that let you do? It. They wanted to have it jump through windows. windows. Yeah. They wanted to have it on the test server by now, but it they were having trouble making it stable, so they said they've delayed introducing vaulting to the public test server. Still curious if that's a new button command or if that's just you walk up to it and you press space and it just does it for you. Yeah, when your guy accidentally jumps out a window. That's going to be fun when um. you actually trigger that all the time. I did a thing where I was playing Rainbow Six the other day. And Good I was game. Playing the character where you drop the armor for everybody when you're your defender. Rook. Yeah. And then I was looking at the armor and I went to go put it on with F, but I didn't hit F, I hit G and it <laughs> dropped a little grenade right into the case. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> everybody everybody in the team was gathered up oh around God. it. So it hurt us all and it took away all the armor, destroyed it. There there are some games where one button does a lot. Yeah. And I remember it might have been Splinter Cell Conviction did that, where I was running from enemies. I opened a door and I was trying to close the door behind me. I ended up switching to a weapon I didn't want that was on yes. the floor. Then I jumped up into a pipe and was like hugging the pipe. I was like, didn't want to do that. <laughs> jumped down, spun around, dived out the window. I was, like, <laughs> I was just trying to close the door. Right. Can you imagine in real life if you accidentally did all that stuff? <laughs> it would be Whoa. insanity. I'm just trying to close the door. Yeah. I always think about that with Assassin's Creed when I'm trying to go in a door and instead I run up the building. <laughs> it's yeah. like, that, that's not something you would accidentally do. There's, there's got to be a video, like a sketch to be made where button, like the same button functions have really yeah. absurd different tasks, but in real life. The, uh, I, I have to say, I did watch a trailer recently for a franchise that I am a huge fan of, even though there's only one installment of the franchise thus far. Call of Duty. I watched the Last of Us 2 mm. trailer. Did you mm -hmm. watch that? Yeah. I didn't like it. I love Last of Us. I you think I, it's too violent? Yeah! And I didn't, res I didn't respond to it at all. Mm. I, I was really, I mean, it looks great. It's, it's incredible. I, we reached that point where, at least for me, we're beyond the uncanny valley. That mm. things can be produced, that it looks... Close enough to photorealistic, and I'm sure when I look back at it ten years from now, like, that's fucking garbage. Yeah, but, but next to a real human, it's still way in the uncanny valley. Uh, mm. I don't know. Like I think Rogue One was like, uh, like right coming up. Yeah, it was. It was. But some people, I'm saying for there. me, for me, like the yeah. Grand Moff Tarkin stuff was rough, but it was almost passable for me. I could feel like if they had another year of technology, no, I'm with you. Yeah, I felt like it could have been there. Oh man, uh, I I like it. I, uh, I wasn't as off put by that trailer. The uh, Last of Us Two trailer. The Last of Us Two trailer. Um, I thought I thought it was good, but I can see why people were were upset I, about it. I think it. it's because you don't have the emotional connection with those characters because you don't know who they are. But I'm pretty sure that that's probably Ellie's mom, right? Yeah, I thought it might be a prequel. There's some theories mm -hmm. about that. That it was. Is it going to have multiplayer? I'm sure. Yeah. Last of Us. Let's do it. I'm so mad about you guys for that because we were all playing. Last of Us multiplayer. Yeah. And then you guys just cut me out. Yeah, we uh, did like what we did to Blaine. We, what? I, look, it was, it was 2014. Awkward. It was a long time ago. We asked you if you wanted to be in that Let's Play. No, it isn't true. We only called it Last of Gus because you didn't go. And Wait, Gus what's that? What? Me, I'm uh, the fucking substitute? Show me. We asked you both. <laughs> Wait, no. I was yeah. never asked to be in it. Ever. We go back and listen to podcasts from that point in time. Why well, you probably just weren't in the building. That was back when we could look around the building. How did you ask me if I wasn't in the building, Gavin? What'd you do? Uh, talk I, to an empty room? Is there a text? I assume. Is there no, a written record no. of this? That was when the office was small enough where you could just walk around and find someone. You didn't have to be like, are oh, you at the office? I've literally never been in a Let's Play. Not one. I would specifically remember. You should have come to work that day. <laughs> you were probably not there. You were probably off somewhere. Then how did you I, ask me? And I said I no. I probably went to ask you. You weren't there. And then I didn't. That's a totally you weren't different there. than what you said. That's we were. Go ahead. British. Look, we intended British to have a, a video version of the stuff we were doing outside of videos. What? You have a video that's that's a different video than a video? No, we were trying to make a video. Go ahead. With the same people who played outside of videos. All of us. Right. But you weren't there, is what I'm well, saying. Now you're saying I wasn't there. That's different than saying I. you asked me to be Why it. would we be, all be playing and then we only ask Gus to be in it? I don't know. I don't know. An agenda. 
of some kind. It's conspiracy you, theories. Never, you've been in Let's Play. What are you talking about? I haven't been. I've you never. Mean, you've not been in Let's Play with Achievement Hunter. I was in the what I consider to be. I know this is a point of contention. What I consider to be the first Let's Play was was the Left for Dead one. I know you think that your what was it your Watchmen video when was the first Let's Play. No, the first Let's Play was ODST. ODST. You were in that. No, because the Gus was in that. The the Left for Dead Survival Guide was before oh, that. No. Yes. Was it? Yeah. Th that was the achievement guide. G well, yeah, but okay. okay, that's fair. Weren't we trying to get like a bronze medal in ODST? I don't know. I don't know why you don't like my Watchmen reason. If you give it an achievement guide, because the achievement guide was Watchmen. I, but we weren't trying to get the achievement. It didn't. It, no point did it show you how to get the achievement. It was just being shitty. Oh, I'm thinking game. of Man versus Tank. Yeah, that you're thinking of Man versus Tank. That was okay. just a super popular. Uh, achievement guy from season one of Achievement Hunter. We don't have to fight over the first Let's Play. No, no, I don't want to either because it's like uh, Michael will show up here and then they'll be yelling and everything. Well, that was way after. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But uh, yes, I I have been in horse. I was in a horse tournament that I won, and I think that's it. So if you consider that to be Let's Play, everyone else yes. took their ball and went home. I've never, I've never been in Let's Play. So we're play. not counting. So I remember if I would, no, if no, I had no, been no. asked to be in a Let's Play, I would have remembered that specifically. You want to be a Let's Play? I don't have time. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but I would here. love to. I would love to do that. Absolutely. What do you want to do? I want to play fucking Cuphead. <laughs> have you played Cuphead for Pay Play Pals yet? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, Michael. I he was more angry than some episodes of Rage Quit. Yeah, it's infuriating because it's a terrible game. It's such a good game. We need to stop oh. talking about it, so it's entertainment. Oh. It's torture. No, it's a good game. A lot of good games this year. Nope. Um, there are. None of them are Cuphead. I want to also remind everyone that uh, if everyone should check out the Rooster Teeth store at store.roosterteeth.com. We have new merch every week. Hoodies, t-shirts, collectible socks. Is it another uh, Jeff or Barbara shirt? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're looking for <laughs> gifts for the holiday season, check it out. And if you're watching on a live stream right now because you're a first member, you know you get 5% off at checkout. So if you're not a first member, you're literally not getting savings. You should be a first member. Save money. Go to store.roosterteeth.com. Buy some shit. Pre order that fucking Bernie hat. <laughs> is that out yet? No. Is it coming out? They just are surprised to find out now that I don't like it. They just they're just figuring this out. Well now people are gonna buy it because I know you don't like it. Uh, I know I'll And they're gonna say they told you so. I'll set an extra life goal to just burn them all. <laughs> it's like if we raise five bucks, <laughs> I will burn Very I will burn all way. these hats. That's what you could do if you had all that Apple money. You could buy all of them and burn them. I can, I, I got I got Rooster hat money. I can do that. <laughs> I can buy our stock out for that. I don't want to reward bad behavior, though. Are you <laughs> saying that the fact that someone made you a hat is bad behavior? It's the that hat, yeah. <laughs> Specifically, making Who that made it? hat. What is he's very like? he's super defensive about it. Too. Well, I, seen this yet. You just if shot. everyone wants to run and grab the hat out of my office, so Blaine can see it. You can have you not it. seen it? You no, see the hat. Is it so? This is this is to combat. Like Jeff has a clothing line. Yeah, nice style. Yeah, it might be on the table beside Ellie's desk. Barbara has one, and this was. Yeah. To be like a part of like <laughs> this is like a Bernie thing, right? That they were gonna buy. Which, if you were gonna design that, what would you make? You probably would make like a polo shirt or something. That's sure. more in my style. And I do wear baseball caps, but I tend to wear uh, Rooster Teeth baseball caps. This thing was just it didn't. A Bernie make, cap would be a Rooster Teeth cap. It, I, it would be. Did which I understand like that part of it fitting in. But when you see the design of this thing, did, did you tell be, Rising and you didn't like it then? Like, look, are you wearing are you wearing a Jeff shirt? What is that? This is a Meg shirt. Oh, it's a Meg shirt. Sorry, the uh, like the the thought and the effort that goes into the design of Barb's and Jeff's stuff was like, oh, this is really cool. They said we're gonna make a hat. I said great, and then they gave me this hat, which I guess is not. Like, Edward, we're still looking for it. Oh, we're still looking for it. Anyway, we'll we'll show it later. What Blaine. would they do for a Blaine line? That's not gonna happen. Ah, uh, you could do uh, tank tops, <laughs> shirts that are gear. way too small. Ah, uh, yeah, let's do that. It'll be a shirt that just says fatty. <laughs> 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 I can't even make those jokes. I'm worried that you're or right? not just a shirt that says "I'd fuck Army Hammer." That's <laughs> true. But who wouldn't? You don't need to make the shirt because everybody knows it. I don't. I think someone's running to get the hat. It would be a popular shirt. I'm, I'm waiting to see if he comes back. Because how not, long are we gonna, gonna give it? Podcast. Edward, how long? Where is it? ETA? Not coming. No, he said no. Nope. nope. I'll All go right. get it for the post show. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, we'll everybody. Two seconds. Blaine reacts. Uh, to hats. Oh, don't forget, uh, CCTV <laughs> is back, and they're going to be following the Receipt Podcast right now. Uh, so if you're watching for the cock block and I'm a first member, uh, stick around for CCTV. Uh, extra life. Extra life this weekend, and we'll see you guys. It's going to be chaos. Bye.